So once uh, I dah start tu Ya adik Ya adik ah, Tu Ken dah ada Okay kita dah live dah Yep Kita on uh, I'm going to change my Lagi kejap Live. No. Hello everybody, welcome to Trainers Virtual Carnival. Hi. Can start very very soon. So uh, sit back and enjoy. Uh, we are going to begin in a few minutes time. So for now, just enjoy the music, eh? And at the same time, please share, 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 share the video feed. As many people as possible. And yes, you are share, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's share, oh. Share, oh. Okay, share, share the guy. It's a blue face, Facebook group, oh. Oh, yo. Yeah. <laughs> This is madness lah. Sepuluh Facebook. More than that lah. Over, <laughs> over. <laughs> I also share to my uh, own personal group. What's that group there? Ah. Ah. Okay, I bought crossword things there. Eh? All right. Kalau crossword things kan, dia tak dengar pula lagu. Yo, Eugene tak ada. Tengah, tengah apa? Uh, uh, itu apa? Uh, comb the hair. <laughs> Combing the hair. Yeah. Buka rambut. Bukan. Oh, bukan. Oh, bukan. I see. <laughs> Dia minum air. Uh, so, comb the hair. Combing the hair. Yeah. So, rambut. nak tanya, uh, mereka tak boleh t- uh, lihat kita, k- kami kan? Hanya Eugene sem- semasa dia present, hanya Eugene yang mereka yang boleh tengok. Betul kah? Atau tidak? Rephrase? They see whatever that they are streaming live from their feed lah. Yeah. Oh. If you want to see also what people see, you can check out in the live chat, uh, in the Facebook live. Oh. oh. Uh, you just... about now not yet Facebook, not yet live, right? Already. Already live. live. Ah. Yeah, it's already live. You can see here on top here says live on Facebook. <laughs> So you just go to Sifu Time, you go and see the latest video, you can oh, see live. the live. Live! Live! Oh. Live! There's a button live there! Oh yeah. my oh my goodness! <laughs> Ken! Hello! <laughs> so excited! Yeah, lah, of course! So whatever you're saying now, everybody can hear! Oh. Hello everybody! Yeah. This is Ken! Hello, good morning! My name is Eugene! Nice to meet you! All. <laughs> oh, so there's car! Okay, okay! I'll uh, share to my, my uh, yeah. <laughs> Give me a minute, guys. Nah, I'm going to Okay. I'm going to have a Start sharing, start sharing, everybody, the viewers. Stop sharing, ah. Stop. Start sharing. <laughs> start sharing, ah. Oh, okay. Start yeah. sharing. <laughs> sharing apa, ah? Sharing the live feed now. Ah, you share. Just now you say you not share dengan ramai kawan-kawan you. Yeah, saya sudah share. Share itu uh, seafood time itu apa? Itu website, hey. itu link saja. Ah, okay. Ah. Now the the video. Ah, itself, okay, very share. good. Hmm. Boleh boleh. Bukan share ni zoom link ah. Oh, bukan. <laughs> Jangan share zoom link. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you sing a uh, negara lagu now? 
Dia tu stand lah. Eh, tak boleh lah. Saya tak pakai. <laughs> eh, jangan berdiri. <laughs> Yelah, jangan berdiri. <laughs> Aku janji. <laughs> Aku janji tak akan berdiri. <laughs> Ken, jangan buat jenayah pagi-pagi, Ken. <laughs> pagi-pagi semua kita punya brother-brother dah bangun dah. <laughs> ya, tu biasa lah. Ya. Yeah. Stand united, stand for your country, stand for your rights, stand for oh. your wife. <laughs> stand for it. Stand for your wife. Stand for your wife, yo god. Itulah. Betul lah, zaman-zaman ni kita kena stand, kita kena keluar berdiri dulu. Kita kena check, okay, environment okay tak, bini boleh keluar tak, scan dulu. Lepas scan, okay, bini boleh keluar. Yeah. Jarak 1 okay. meter. <laughs> hey, Kemana G. Kevin lah? Tak rambut. Sikat rambut je lah. Ah, ya, sikat rambut, yes. Yes, that's right. Sikat rambut, ya. Yeah. Ha, sikat rambut. Sorry. Dia pergi beli hair gel. Dekat can, grab ke? Ya, Su Anne tanya, can I share? Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Yes. Please. Mesti please. share. Cute. Ah, talking about cute. Let me bring my kids uh uh toy here first. Mood. Right, first I have oh, yeah. uh yeah, my kids have got a lot of toy right to cute, make it support me um give you energy <laughs> i think that's not your kids toy that's your toy <laughs> actually i find it for myself then after that my kids my 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 six uh five years old look at it uh papa i want this uh, <laughs> oh, oh no that's mine that is mine <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy more lah. You have to buy more than one. See, don't know. <laughs> If I buy more, he got two lor. I buy three, he got three more lor. <laughs> everything is this one. <laughs> he took everything. He took everything. <laughs> I got one more. Da da hey, Where's your camera? Pikachu dah electric shot the camera. <laughs> Ken kena electric. Aduh kesian. Alamak. Salah button ke Ken? Dah dia punya tu. Okay, so end dah share. Okay. Okay. So the song is called I'm not alone right? I'm all alone. Okay. I'm all alone. Ken, we cannot speak. Ah, now we can see you. Hello, and and and. Hello. They are not. This is. I'm not alone. Right, he's always with me. <laughs> Ta-da! Now you know. My kid got all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of lots of toys now. Yeah. Kids nowadays have to have toys. All right, we're going to start in approximately two or three minutes from now. So sit back, everybody, and get ready for the Trains Virtual Carnival Volume 2 Excel Madness Day. Tai, tai. Morning, can we still talk? Ah? Can we still talk or, or when the hey. when is it time to we can we should move ourselves? Okay, Soon we can talk, but we cannot play toys. <laughs> <laughs> This is power. Good morning. 
Good morning, Suen. Good morning, Tai. Good morning, uh, Mimi. Who else? Who else? Who else is there? We have Tiana July. Welcome, welcome. Tiana July. Yes. Oh, good morning. Okay. We're gonna start very, very soon. Five more minutes. Yep. So you better call your friends, your family to switch on their computer. Waiting for all the seafoods, they are getting ready. The first presenter is getting ready. Gonna start very, very shortly. Gobi, good morning, Gobi. Aras Legacy. I'm Boramai Nora Azlina. Wow. Wow. Thank you very much, Sifu. This is this is like a dream, man. <laughs> That's why we call it as madness. <laughs> 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 This is because we are mad. <laughs> we are mad. <laughs> we are mad. Oh yeah. I think this one make. Oh, this one more mad. <laughs> All right. So sharing. Hmm. Okay. Uh, are we ready? Oh yeah. Eugene, yeah. You're the first. Yo, Give you power. Leg. Give you power. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um. I think uh, those waiting, they are also ready. We are going to start at sharp nine um, in the morning and... Uh, all right, um, uh, for the friends in the Zoom, um, I would like you to uh, unmute yourself and also if we can uh, have a short picture of you all. Yeah, it's already recorded in Zoom, in, in Facebook, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's start. Uh, you hold on now. Uh, Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning and to all our viewers and my fellow trainers. Uh, before we begin, I would like to take the opportunity to pay respect to those who have lost their life to COVID and also to those who are currently infected by the virus and pray for their speedy recovery. Can I have one minute of silence to the non-Muslims and the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha for the Muslims? Al-Fatiha. Welcome to Trainers Virtual Carnival Volume 2, Excel Madness Day. This initiative was done about a year ago with 17 trainers with 17 different topics. We had a great time sharing all kinds of knowledge from IT to non-IT. Who would have thought online learning could be this fun? And due to that reason, we are back, focusing a more specific area to assist the industry we decided to cover Microsoft Excel for now and hoping to go into other areas needed by the industry in future events. Uh, this time around, we have gathered 15 trainers sharing 15 different topics plus the tips and tricks customized just for you. For your knowledge, uh, as for today, uh, the first slot, we are going to cover anything from basic to intermediate of Excel. And on the second slot, we're going to cover uh, the intermediate up to the advanced levels levels of Excel. So uh, sit back and enjoy Excel Madness Day. And I would like to call our first presenter, Eugene. Hey, Hi, Eugene. everybody. Hi, Hi you, bro. Hi, Eugene. Let me Hi, Eugene. 
Thank you for inviting me into this session, and I'm very grateful. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So you are going to be the first printer. Are you nervous? Yes, very. I'm so mad, <laughs> madly nervous. <laughs> madly nervous. <laughs> Orang madly you, in love, you are madly with Excel. <laughs> so if you can still remember, uh, actually, um, we have seen uh, Eugene in action in the uh, trailer showcase, which was in uh, October last year. So Eugene is back for the second time, this time around for the trainer's virtual carnival. So um, I hope that you are going to, I assure that you are going to enjoy his session. Right. So, without further ado, uh, I pass the stage to uh, Eugene. For all those who are in Zoom, please unmute yourself, and if possible, please switch off your video as well. So, Eugene, over to you. Okay. Thanks, guys. So, a quick introduction. Uh, today in Excel, we cover we are covering some beginners basic. Basically, we are going to look at Excel formatting types of formatting we have in Excel, especially text and numbers. So over here, if you can see my screen, I'm sharing a quick snapshot of what we are going to be sharing about today. So here, basically, I have prepared a quick sheet about all the types of formats in Excel that we experience. And throughout this uh, next 20 or 20 minutes, I'm going to share with you quickly all this formatting and what it's about. So this is a good course for those who are basically trying to understand Excel when you input data, how it works and what works and what doesn't work. And sometimes why when you key in certain data, they look funny or they look different from the natural way it's supposed to look. We're going to explore all that. So in this quick video preview here, I've shown you that I'm going to show certain things like dates, time, how they all look in Excel and how it all works. All right. So without further ado, this sheet will be available to you guys at the end of the day. You can ask within Sifu time. Uh, they will share with you this sheet so that you can also look into it, practice, and explore. All right, I'm going to stop this video now. So this is what we will be learning. All right, and I'm going to pop open my sheet. So to begin, in Excel, if you, if you normally use Excel, I'm going to zoom in my screen a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to move this aside. All right, guys. Just to be sure, um, while I'm going through this session, if you notice any break or if my zooming in is not working, you can type in the chat box below, guys, or my fellow trainers, just to let me know. But if everything is going smooth, then cool. So let's begin. In this data types in Excel, there are only two types. And let's explore them. One of them is numbers. So that's a random number. And the other one is text. The first thing you'll notice in any Excel default is numbers will always behave by going to the right and text will be going to the left. So this is important to note because when you key in anywhere, you will notice that numbers will always behave going to the right. Now, because numbers are something we can calculate and Excel pushes it to the right so that you know. And if you type text with numbers or anything, it will also stick only to the left. So this tells you that Excel understand that you're trying to key text. So let's take a quick look at all these type of numbers. So I'm going to key in a random number here. One, two, three, four, five, point six, seven. Now, when you key in a typical number in Excel, this is what it looks like. However, this is a bit hard to read because there's no formatting. So let's try the next one. I'm just going to copy this and paste it here, here, and here. Now let's take a quick look at the differences. So this is actually a format. Now, if I were to click on home, I'm going to zoom in. In the top here, you will see in home ribbon menu, the number we have general setting. Now, if I click the next one, which is a number, I'm going to try and choose in the home ribbon. I'm going to lock this and pin it. And I'm going to choose number. Now, by choosing number, the first thing you'll notice is I can actually format this with comma. And you will notice it's easier to read that this is 12,345. Next, with currency, if I were to choose currency, it will basically give me the formatting of my default value, where my current setting is in UK pound, 
but I've also prepared one where I can change this to uh, Ringgit Malaysia, which I'll show you shortly how that can be done. And then accounting, if I have to change this to accounting, then you'll notice that the pound sign, however, is pushed all the way to the left because this is easier for people who are doing finance to actually read the numbers. And of course, the currency value of your choice. Now, to just quickly change this formatting of the pound sign, right click, click on format cells. And over here, if you notice, all of this customization is under currency. You can choose a symbol of your own currency in your country, or you can go to custom really quickly. And in front here, this pound sign, I'm just going to replace this by just deleting it, opening a double quote and place RM space, close double quote. And now I've basically custom formatted this value of currency to Ringgit Malaysia. Click OK, and there we go. Now the same for accounting as well. If I were to right click this, go to format cells, under custom. Now I know you'll see a lot of funny little symbols here and you're wondering what they are. Not to worry, we'll explore that shortly. But right now, if I just need to change the symbol of the pound, put a double quote, put RM space, double quote, and there we go, I have the RM. Now, the other values that you see here are all separated with a tiny semicolon. So this semicolon allows you to add different types of ways your number will show. Okay, so think of formatting like a disguise. The core number, what it actually looks like, and then the disguise is where we put on a clothes or a suit on the number that you see. So right now, I just have a positive value. This is sufficient. This after the semicolon is for a negative value. And this one is for any other value and then tax. Now for now, RM will do. Okay, let's explore short dates. Now, when we type dates in Excel, it's important to take note. Uh, let's say today is the 1st of August, 2021. Now upon keying it, you notice that it jumps straight to the right. So Excel understands you're trying to key in a date. Just take note if you are in the UK or US settings because if you are, sometimes it will be inverted. To change these settings, you'll need to go to your control panel in Windows and basically check your region, but we'll not go into that. Now, for long date, if I were to key in a date here, 2021, I can click on this and then click on date. There is another format besides the short date, which is long date. And it gives you a more detail that if the month is the zero one, which is the digit in front, or the one in the middle. So in this case, we know that the 08 is August. So it gives us the long date. Let's go to time. Now, when I key in time, let's say one o'clock or 1.30 p.m. Now, Excel recognizes time as well. And we're gonna check this in more detail a bit as we go further down. How about percentages? So if I put in 0.1, this is a value in Excel. However, if I click on the general settings and click on percentage, it changes to 10%. Okay, going on, we have fractions. So let's say 1.5. Now, if I wanna show this in fractions, click on this value, go to fractions, and it shows one and a half. So 1.5 is also equivalent to one and a half. So if you would like to show in these values, this is where it will work out for you. Now, scientific numbers usually are very big and they involve something like this. And if I want to change this to a scientific value number, I can click on the same settings and go to scientific. So it actually converts this number into a disguise. So bear in mind, guys, all the values I key in here earlier are basically values and its core value is still the same. Okay, it's just a format, like I said the clothes that it's wearing. Now, last but not least, tax. So let's just type Excel madness today. And if you notice, this one just sticks to the left. And this also is under the tax layout. Now, any of these values here, all the top ones are all numbers. Only this last one here right now, which I've set as tax format, is gonna behave as tax. Bear in mind, anything that's in text format cannot be used for calculation. So here's a quick example. 
If I were to select all of these values above I've created and convert them to text value, they will all behave on the left. Okay, now I can no longer sum this up. I'm just going to do a quick example. This one, this cell plus this cell equals, oops, it gets the sum. But my point is, this is not going to be behaving as text. I'm using XR365, so maybe it's a bit more intelligent. If using older versions, if they behave as text, they will not be able to calculate. So moving on, we are going to look at dates and time in Excel. Dates and time in Excel if, are represented by a serial number. Now, what do I mean by that? First, let's just explore some basic functions of dates that you can use. I'm going to put here equals today, open bracket, close bracket. And when I hit enter, it's going to pull up today's date. Now, this is a common function used in Excel so that everyone who wants a, a sheet that constantly checks the current date, they can use this formula. Now, if you want a static date, you can also use control semicolon. In this form field here, in this cell right now, I'm going to type control semicolon and I get today's date as well. Now, there is a difference. If I were to click on this, you can observe it here. It's a formula, meaning if I open this sheet tomorrow, it will show the 16th of August, 2021. But this one, when I use the shortcut key, is always going to maintain at 15, 8th of August, 2021. So this one is different because you will always be the same, no matter when you open the sheet. But this one will always check your current date. And they will always check from your laptop or computer time. And that's how it knows. So let's explore today what I mean by dates are serial numbers. Let's say my birthday is on the January of 2nd, 1980. Now, this date right here, Excel recognizes it. But let's say if I duplicate this and paste it right here, what I'll get now is this same date, I'm going to choose the settings to general. And you'll see 29252. Now, 29252 is actually the date for 1st of February, 1980, okay? Meaning to say that, what is today's date? So let's just click this and change this to general. So today's date is 44,423. Now, to clarify, if I put one, then what is this if I convert back to date? So let's click all these cells together multi-select and change back to short date. One now has become the 1st of January, 1900. That means the first day in any Excel sheet cannot be less than this. This is your first date. 1st of January, 1900 is the first date that Excel will recognize. So to prove my point, if one is 1st of January, 1900, 365 will be, and let's change this back. 30th of December, 1900. So it's exactly one whole year for the year 1900. Okay. So you guessed it. That means if I were to key in a random number, like let's say 56424, what will this be if I change this to a date? And you'd be surprised. Changing this to short date will show that this is in the future. 29th of July, 2055. Okay, which is a bigger number than the initial number here, which is 44,423. So that just means that six dates are represented as serial number and it's counting days. So every day as we go along today and tomorrow, it will extend one number. So tomorrow we will be 44,424. To prove my point, if I type 44424 four, four, here and change this to short date, you will see tomorrow's date. So that's what dates are in Excel. They're actually serial numbers. Now let's take a look at time. Time is a bit more interesting. Now, if I were to just say one o'clock,
in time, there is a formatting that we can calculate. So let's say I were to put here as two o'clock. When you just key in time in Excel, it's only recognized as its values. So in other words, if I were to take this minus this value, I get one hour exactly. Okay, so you can calculate time in Excel. There's a bit more in-depth in time we can approach, but for now, we just understand it as it is. Moving on, we can also do formatting with numbers. Now, I'm going to key a sample big number here, and this is one that was taught by my, one of my Excel teachers, that you can actually reformat this so it's easier to read, okay, aside from just uh, assigning commas. So let's test it out. Let's say one day my boss tells me, Eugene, this number is too big. Can we just make it to the roundest value and just see the millions at the back? And I say, sure, why not? 9876543211. And now I'm going to format this in a way that allows me to just see millions and bring it up to the closest rounded number. So what my boss mean is, he just want to see 987.7 million. Okay, he wants that text in there. So I tell my boss, sure, no problem. Let's work it out. I'm going to right click on this now and go to format cells and next explore. Click on custom settings. And here in the general section, I'm going to replace this with a square bracket, open, sorry, bigger or equals to 1 million. So 1 million has six zeros. There we go. And close square bracket. Now, if anytime you want to re-explore this and test out on your own, you can just re-watch our video. Then I'm going to put here the condition is these represent the mass values of the number in front and 0, 0.00 actually represent the decimal values and numbers that you actually want to see. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete one zero and put a comma and another comma the comma actually bring, brings the value uh, closer to 1,000. So two commas actually now rounds it up into uh, two 2,000 values. So basically, you see 987.7 only. Now, I'm going to open the double quote and space and put millions. And there we go. Now, we see 987.7 million. Click OK, and that works out great. Now, however, my boss say if I key in thousands, or oh, it doesn't reach a million yet. I need it to show thousand, right? Because here, if I key in thousands, it's not going to show thousands. Only a big number like earlier, it will show in millions. So here's a quick tip. I can use the format painter on top, click on this function here and select here as well. Now what I've done is, I can basically format this cell And I can add some additional conditions. So after millions, let's just put square bracket bigger or equals to 1,000. Okay, close square bracket. And I want to show the value zero, one comma, and put 1,000. Now, I know after this, my boss is going to say, what if I key in any other value? What is it going to show? So I'm just going to put another semicolon condition for and put zero. So if the user keys in any other value besides thousand or million, it's going to show zero. So let's test this out now. Oops, slight formatting issue. Let me go back there, fix that. 50,000. So if I key in 500, then it will be any value. And if I key in a big number, it will be in millions. So I'm just going to click here and put any value. And here I don't have that formatting. So just click on Format Painter by selecting the above cell that has the format. Use Format Painter, click on this. And now it has this value as well. So now keying in any value, you will see 36. Keying in thousands, you will see thousands. And in big numbers like million, you will see millions. So that's a quick tip here. Now, how can I format non-calculating numbers? So this one is interesting. Okay, non-calculating numbers like credit card, 
what I can do is, let's say a credit card number usually has 16 digits. I'm just going to key in now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's 16 digits and it will show scientific because it's such a huge number. So if I go to format cells, what I can do quickly right here, I go to custom and I can put the hashtag values earlier that I've shown you and do this quick trick. Dash, hash, 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 dash, hash, 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 dash, hash, 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 hash. And now quickly you can see that this format allows me to key in something similar to a credit card number. Click OK. Okay, and let's just extend that out a bit. All right, last but not least, here we have another few more sessions to cover. IC number, let's say in Malaysia, we key in IC number. So we don't have to go through to the extent of changing everything again. Let's just key in a sample IC number, 8805121562. I can reuse the format above that I've copied. Go to custom and change it here. So I see numbers basically, we start with the first eight digits before the dash. So I can start here with the first dash. Here's the second dash, don't need that. And just clear up the rest. And there we go. Now it has a format of IC number. And now what about handphone numbers? So handphone numbers, usually when you key in the zero, it will disappear, right? So in this case, what I can do is I can just right click this, format this cell and go to custom and change it like this. I can put a mask of plus six zero in front and that will appear. And then I can put the other values at the back. Put one zero. So now this will replace the values in the front and now it will look like this. All right. So I'm glad that you guys have stayed tuned for this long and check out how we can format numbers and also uh, how exciting that we can actually change numbers to what we want it to see. And you get some insights in what all this is about. So before I end my session, like I said, if you need a copy of this sheet and you want to explore further, we'll provide it in the Sifu Time chat. So right now I'm going to hand it over to my next presenter, which is Saifu, who continue the next course in his topic. All right, Saifu, all the way to you. Okay, thank you, Eugene. Oh, you're most so, welcome. So, uh, how, how do you feel, Eugene? Uh, uh, feel, I feel pretty good. I hope uh, that was a good information that I've shared with uh, everyone on uh, Excel about formats and numbers. I believe so. You have set up a very high benchmark for the rest of the trainers to to cope, you know, because you are the first presenter. We have another 14. I am the second one. So, wow. I, I, I don't think I set the benchmark that high. I'm, I'm, I'm just sharing some basic stuff in Excel. So yeah, don't worry about it. It's very awesome. It's awesome. And I believe uh, viewers, they have enjoyed your session. And um, I think they are looking forward for your file soon. Yeah. Not it. I'll well, share so. it with you so that they, they, you can put it up the link somewhere. Hmm, sure. All okay. right. Great. So, Saifu, um, we're excited to see your part of the session and what you're going to share and uh, looking forward to it. Cool, cool. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, hi, everybody. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So, now it's my turn. I'm taking over from Eugene. I'm the second presenter for today. So, I'm not wearing my blazer, so I need to be a bit leisure. Just now, it's only for the introduction. Now a bit more relaxed. Time to so sweat. Let me share my... <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to mute myself. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, so um, as you can see, this would be my topic. is no blank rows plus no blank columns equals speed. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Based on my experience doing training all these years, I've... Um, train a lot of people from various uh, industries, uh, private and also government sectors. And there are participants who I have come across have shown me some of their templates uh, that they use at work, uh, which they are trying to find a much better way on how 
to do their daily task. And um, there are a few things that I've come across. Uh, this is some of the, I would say the usual ones, the blank rows and the blank columns. See, there's a lot of people who would like to have blank columns in their templates and some for those who downloaded their files from um, other sources, right? They might be having problems with blank rows like this one. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, for this session, I'm going to split the uh, presentation into two different areas. One on how to solve the problems by using a function in Excel and also by using another features which is actually quite famous in Excel, which is called the pivot table to clean the blank rows and even the blank column. And the second part of my presentation today, what I'm going to do is I would like to share with you what with the advantage of not having all these blank rows and blank columns. And what do I mean by no blank rows, no blank columns equals speed. You'll see and you will uh, look at how by not having all this, we are going to chop down the steps. And I believe, and I did mention just now, that um, the first part of the slot is going to be basic. And the second part of the presentation for today is going to be the intermediate and also web parts. All right. So let's get to work. So the first part here, I'm going to use this database. And as you can see, there's a lot of blank rows and blank columns have been set up. Okay. Usually we can see this kind of things inside the database that they downloaded from other sources, from a system. So when they bring that in into Excel, they can't really straight away work with the database. They have to massage it. If they know how to massage it. If not, they will work with the database as it is. And as you can see, if you were to work like this, for instance, create a pivot table, definitely a big no-no. Second, if you would like to sort this database, oh, it's going to be like uh, as a massacre, <laughs> I would say, yeah? because it will involve a lot of steps just to get the same result. So how to sort this out by using a function in Excel? Uh, for those who would like to have a copy of this file later, uh, I will share the link if you want at the chat area after my session. Okay, uh, for you to uh, review and test it out yourself. Cool. All right, come. Now, as you can see here, we have a couple of black rows and blank columns. And as you can see here, it's off until row 48. So how do I select the blank rows and blank columns? I believe you have seen people doing this. They will select, delete. Those who are a bit smarter, what they will do, they will select like that and they will try to delete like so. And But just imagine if you were to have like 10,000 rows or even 20,000 rows, are you thinking of deleting every single row that way? Just imagine the amount of time for you to complete such a task. You might be spending what, half an hour, maybe one hour, or maybe for some, the whole day just to do that. Now, not just by removing rows, it goes the same for columns as well. Selecting, oh, it's going to be very, very tedious. So let's work the smart way. So I'm going to undo all this and try to get back the same database. So how do we select? Don't expect to press control, even though Excel allows you to do that. Please, no style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click at select. And can you see that go to? When I click that and press special, it will open this pane. 
or if you are using a much uh, newer version, the later version, latest version of Microsoft Excel, you should be able to get the button straight away from this menu. Click that, this will pop up. Again, if you would like to use the shortcut, what would be the button that you should press? Correct, it's F5. Then go to special. Now, uh, since some of us here, uh, no, most of us here, due to COVID, we are working from home, you're using your own laptop. When you try to press the F5, it doesn't work. Please remember, you might need to press the Fn F5 as well. The Fn and the F5 as well. All right, so let's go to this pane. So what do I choose? I choose blacks. When I do that and press OK, uh-huh. See, it selected all the blank cells and it stops at row 45, 48. Wow, see how smart that is, yeah? Just imagine. So what do I need to choose after that? Now, what you can do is, can you choose any of this? No, not simply. See what happened when I click at delete sheet rows. Boom. Ooh, where's my title? All gone, just like that. Wow, very risky, yeah? <laughs> so what do I have to choose then? You have to go to delete, go to delete cell. Let's say if I were to choose shift cells up, then press OK, kabam, done. No blank rows. Now, what about columns? You have to deselect, go back to find, go back to special, then select blanks. Then it will now select the columns. Again, you go to delete cells and select the shift cell left. Press OK, done. See how easy that is? No blank rows, no blank column. So how do we know that it works? Click there, click here, press Control A, it will select the whole worksheet. Click here, Control A, it only select that particular database. Now that everything is intact, then you can start working with the database. Now, talking about database, yeah, I have to also, let me add this one in, yeah? Now, I've seen a lot of people, whenever they receive a database from other sources, they don't really bother checking whether the data is correct or not. So you have to remember, what is the purpose of Microsoft Excel? The key purpose of Excel is doing analysis. So in order for you to provide that analysis, you have to make sure that the accuracy of your data is at the highest. So how do I check that? Now, in my class, when I, work, I do things like this, then they notice, oh, is that available in the previous version? I said, yes, definitely. And it's, and it's as though that this is something new to them. So what do I mean by that? Look, look, look. As you can see here, for the sales representative, a few names here. Eh? But when I do this, ah, it shows the list of names of these people. This is called a drop-down list. It's called a drop-down list. How do I get a drop-down list? You can do it either two ways. One, you can just right-click right -click and select from, pick from drop-down list. That's one. Or you can press the Alt and down arrow key. So what's the purpose of having this, this drop-down list? So let's say, for instance, if you would have that mic with the space bar, see the difference. If I were to do this again, alternate and down arrow key, you're going to see that there are two mics in this list. Then you know that something is wrong with the data that need to be sorted out and checked before I move to the next stage in doing the analysis. Let me repeat that again, alternate and down arrow key. So let's see if I were to remove this space back again, back to normal, yeah? And then voila. So now if you were to go and check your database, apart from not having blank rows and blank columns, I'm sure that you will feel much more comfortable and confident with the kind of results that you get whenever you use any functions or any formulas in Excel. Okay, now let's move to the next part, the pivot cleaning. 
Mm. As you can see, I've already colored some of the cells here in green. And I purposely didn't put in any blank column. Why? Because we know very well that that pivot table will not work if you were to have a blank column. So we don't need that. Yeah? But I'm having here some rows which is completely blank, completely blank, and some with only the date. Why do I need to put that? See, based on my experience again, there are times where these people, when they key in data into the Excel spreadsheet or into the system, that they, they forgot to remove it. Or they try to avoid redundancy. So they might have just put in some part of the data, but not the whole set. So what we need is the whole set. Okay? And uh, the advantage of, of creating a pivot. Okay, let me go here for a while. Let me go to the end here. In order for me to create a pivot table, once I already have a database without blank rows and blank columns, I can just click at one cell. That's the advantage. Click here and insert and click at pivot table. As you can see that Excel will be smart enough to detect the size of the database automatically. Let me do that again. Click here, insert, pivot, done. If you're ready, just press OK, then you're up to use the pivot table. Now, coming back to this example again, if I were to do that exercise again, as you can see, it only covers some part of the database. It doesn't cover the whole area of the database. So this is the reason why you should remove all these blanks. So what would be one of the way on how you can remove this? First, I will select the whole thing like so. Yeah. Then I will go to pivot table. I will create that pivot table first. Then I press OK. So now I am having a pivot table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the pivot table here. And I'm going to drag the same product here. And as you can see, that the one that is totally blank is fall under this list. As you can see here again, look, now we are only having about 41 rows of data, 41 rows of data. So if I were to go here and this select the blank, see this now is 34. What do I need to do in order for me to achieve my purpose of not having any blank rows? I just need to double click. Done. We know very well that Excel will open the format as table. Then from this format as table, as you can see, we only have, let me remove this one. Thirty-four rows. We have removed all the blank rows from our database. If you like to use the database for other purposes and you don't need to have format as table, you can always remove it off the total row and convert it to a normal bridge and use it as it is. Just a few steps, just to get it done. Now let's look into sorting. Assuming that we have blank columns. And you need to sort this part. What do you have to do? Most people, they will do it like this. They will select the whole database, like so. Then where do they go? If they would like to sort the date, they will go to data, they will go to custom sort and make sure that my data has been selected, then select the date and then press OK, done because they know very well if they were to do those steps, the whole set will move together. Remember the rules, no blank rules, no blank column. So I'm going to undo that again to comply that and see how many steps do we need to do in order for us to get the same result. I will connect this. I'll put a dummy character just to connect all the titles. 
and see what happened when I press Control E. It selects the whole database. It collect, it selects the whole database. So once it's connected, you want to sort by date, just click one cell, done. Two steps, settle. And once you are done with that, you can always remove it and get back your original database and work like normal and nobody knows about it. Repeat. Oh, no problem. Again, put in any dummy characters to the blank columns, then just sort. And it works like magic. See that? See this? See this? Just two steps. Just to share with you the advantage of not having any rows and blank columns. Cool. Let's continue. Let's have filter. How do we set a filter? All this while, based on my experience, that the most famous technique in getting the filter is by selecting the row header for that particular database. Is that the way? Nah, that's considered old school. Do it the fancy way. How? Since you don't have any blank rows and blank column, what do we do? Just select one cell, like just now, then just press filter. You're done. Imagine if you were to have thousands of rows of data. Are you worried? No, not me, because I feel very comfortable because I've checked my data. I've sorted all the blank rows and blank columns. And I know that I will have the speed because I have lesser steps. Same goes if you like to create that format as table. You don't have to select anything. Just select one cell will do. Select any type that you want based on any color you prefer. Then you see it will select the whole database. Just like magic. Press OK and look confident. Look at my face. Confident. <laughs> All right. So this is how things gonna work for you if you understand the concept on how Excel works and provide that into Excel and Excel will do those work for you with ease. My conclusion and in this area is that I've seen a lot of people that actually not trying to allow Excel to work for them. Instead, they want to become the application and do things manually. Right? So that's about filter and also format as table. Now, let's see the advanced filter. Now, coming back to this database. Now, as you can see, I have some rules here. Why do we need to have that uh, advanced filter? It's because we have different rules being set up. This cannot be done by using filter alone. We need advanced filter. But look, if I were to apply this with advanced filter, and if I don't have any blank rows or any blank columns, what do I need to do? I have to make sure that I select the whole database. But without that blank rows and blank columns, I just need to go to data. I did just need to click at advanced and automatically it selects that database. My next step is only selecting the rules. And okay, done. Done. Just like that, just like magic. Two, three steps, done. Two, three steps, done. This is the way on how you can instruct Excel to work for you and not the other way around. But what if I would like to have this database to appear in a different worksheet? So let me drag it to this side. Yeah. Meaning that I am having the rules in a different worksheet. I would like to extract the data. See how fast can this be done? Yeah. I go to advanced filter. So no database is being selected. You go to the database here, everything is connected, right? So how do we select the whole database again? Control. Yep, control A. And then just click at connect. This one, it's here. Copy to anywhere you want to place it. 
and press OK. Done. Just like that. Two, three steps. Done. Too fast for you? Repeat? Of course. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to remove all this. I'm going to do that again. I go to advanced filter. See, no database is being selected because I didn't select it as a blank cell. I go back to the database and then just press control A. Make sure that this cover, the criteria covers the rules that you want to apply. Then go to copy, copy to select any cell that you want to place it and then press OK. Simple. Now, let's look into pivot. For not having any blank rows, any blank columns, like what we have shown just now, I can just click at one cell. Then I go to insert to pivot table. It will select the whole database. Or if you'd like to use it from your format as table, please do so. Select that, press OK. And then from here, you can summarize the data with pivot table. Then press OK. And from there, you can maneuver or drag the way the data the way you want it to be. It is going to be that simple. Just drag here and there, and then your work is done. And if you feel that you are ready, I can just print it out, drag it out, and get the result, the outcome of your data, the outcome of your data from this pivot table. If you have a few sets, which I believe some of my colleagues here will also mention, if I were to drag it here, uh, some tricks, eh? I can go to pivot table design, you go to options, you go to show report filter pages. See that? I have a few options here that when I press OK, the report is done. In just a few steps of not having any blank rows and any blank columns and apply a pivot table with it and then have the outcome of this in all different worksheets my work is done in just a few steps. Clear? Okay, cool. Now, next, uh, a simple one. Let's say we already have a database that looks like this. Another feature that allows you to use this advantage of not having any blank rows and any blank columns, the subtotal function. So let's say if I would like to know the sales of the products. See, as you see, in order for you to use this, in order for you to use this, you have to sort it first. In order for you to use the subtotal function, you have to sort the area that you would like to, to have the outline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here and sort it first. I don't have to select anything, just click that. Everything is done, then go to outline, then select subtotal. And then from here, I just need to select the type product and then set the formula that I want it to work on. And then for instance, if I were to select not status, I'm going to select quantity or even total together, then press okay, voila, done. So as you can see, the flow of how we work with the application. First, we remove all the blank rows and blank columns. Second, we use the advantage of not having that blank rows and blank columns, sorting just by selecting one cell. And then from there onwards, we are going to use that same function to other areas. So in this case, it's the subtotal function.
All right. So this is how you see, you can see the collaboration of functions and formulas. This is how you tell Excel, Excel, please do this for me. You become the master, Excel become your servant. Cool, all right. That settles it, wow. I see a bit of time here. <laughs> I think I can call upon my next trainer. Uh, oh, gempa lah. Gempa, what's gempa bro? <laughs> a lot of things I didn't know before lah. Now, now I, I, I feel like I see a new dimension, a new world. <laughs> Poyo lah ke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, All right. Let's call upon Kelvin. Mana Kelvin? Hi, Kelvin. Are you there, Kelvin? I'm right here. I was combing my hair just now. Oh, of course. Mm. I know. <laughs> la, la. Habis, habis. You are la, la, like one, one taiko, you know, with the comb. Now, I, since watching your video, I have to go and search online for the hair spray. <laughs> and I... I I've heard people talking and asking me, what brand is that? <laughs> nice looking hair like that, Kelvin. All these years, maintain. Now we know the secret. No, now no, we no. need to it's, know. It's it's a lot of white now. Mm. <laughs> really? Yeah? That shows yeah. wisdom. So, white hair, ah, white hair. Ah. So the, <laughs> the spray doesn't solve the black, the, 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 the white hair problem. Yep. It, oh, no, it just makes you more handsome, lah. You know. <laughs> hey, Cipher, I, 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 I must tell you the truth. I also learned a lot of things from you just now. It was, it was mm. awesome. Right, it was okay. really, really awesome. Uh, how, how everything can be done, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it helps everyone to make life simple. Thank you so much for those tips. Yeah. Yeah, very productive. Because, because we believe the the way Excel works. It, no, the application should assist us in doing our daily work. Yeah. You know, betul, so betul. You, know, you, need, you don't need to make life difficult. You have to make the life simple for this uh, to work. So you have to make sure that the application, we give the things that the application needs in order for it to work properly. Mm. So that's why I come up with this idea. And I hope that, uh, I know the topic is rather simple. Mm. But I hope it's very beneficial, not just uh, myself and others as well. So, uh, Kelvin, so yeah. what will you covering? Um, I tr I I'm trying to cover a topic that uh, most people are having problem with, especially when they are updating their data. Somehow the formula don't follow. The fo the formula will be stuck at the reference. So. Um, this, these are all very simple tricks that I, I, I feel that is quite important that everyone should use. Everyone should know uh, how to make your reference dynamic so that you don't have to uh, catch up with your formulas and uh, edit the formula range and, and whatnot. So I'm, I'm, I feel that uh, this, this uh, is something that a lot of people want to know. I hope so. And uh, it will help. All right, so just just like what you did just now, you move into tables and so on. Yeah, we, we will look into that. I will share a little bit of our functions and 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 a, a little bit of feature uh, within them. Right, so hope hope I'll take over the the the, the thing. Now I'm I'm not sure whether Saifu, do you have that issue? Uh, I I think you don't. But what about the rest of the people? Do you have that issue where your data is stuck at one hundred row? All right, it's one hundred row. And when you have more information that you add on, you realize that your calculation didn't actually expand by itself, and you will have to do a lot of work on that. So yep, yep. yeah, I'm I'm going to talk about that. Just that, just more little part on that. I'm going to uh, extend from what Eugene has mentioned on on some of the references, and I'm also going to extend a little bit of what you have mentioned just now about you changing it into into tables and so on then yeah that's that's what my my role i'm going to do that yeah all right so all right. ladies and gentlemen sorry usually kelvin never fails to amuse not just me <laughs> others as well so sit back and enjoy his session so uh, kelvin over to you thank you so much huh? thank you so much 
so uh, give me a second I'm going to share my screen All right thank you so much everybody thank you for watching thank you for coming into the Sifu time to watch this uh, 30 minutes of my my show now um, I have a very simple information that is showing on the screen now where it has a, a bunch of data crunching numbers and so on so let me just zoom in and have a look these are very simple data where you are working on every day so I didn't talk about cleaning up the data because Saiful had done the job very well now I'm, going to, I'm just going to continue from here assuming that uh, this is what uh, we have in our table in our data and how are we going to make them become uh, dynamic right so this this is where uh, I'm, I'm going to come in I'm going to put in some formulas where if I'm going to add on a few more information in my database I would like I would like all this total which is outside now I would like you to have an a, a imagination now that this whole information here is basically in a different worksheet and right, we can cut and paste this over to another worksheet later and see how it works huh? but later we will just uh, view it next to each other and you can see what are the things that uh, I have written here so the first thing I want to talk about in this example here is something that I believe everyone here should already know which is I want to know what is the total very simple we just click the auto sum now you can do that or you can do that very quickly by just actually highlighting the whole set of data here and just click auto sum that will do the jerk you don't have to do one and then pull down you don't have to do that just again uh, I think it's a bit too fast now you just highlight all your data just click the auto sum once and there you go all the data is already uh, populated accordingly yeah? let's take a look at the reference they are using yep this one this one see they are going to seven this is eight this is nine and the next one is ten so I'm gonna be adding some row 11 12 13 14 later huh, later on so what I'm going to do in this following the uh, data that I already have I'm going to find out what is the grand total of this particular information here so let's take a look huh? I'm going to put equals to sum now this is what a lot of people do right they just highlight that range all right got it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a formula text here for this cell so that you can see the movement of the particular formula it's like e5 to e10 that's what I was using just now e5 to e10 so the function formula text is used to show the formula inside the cell so I just a bit lazy a bit lazy I do not want to come here and show you each time so I, I put it up here so that you can have a look now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grant I want to use the grand total not by reference now by name so I'm going to highlight this highlight this I'm going to call this range I highlight all this I'm going to call this one as amount now, I purposely use a different name I know this is called total I just use a different name here amount so this is called amount for this range now and I'm going to write the formula the same formula equal to sum amount so it still gives me the same answer so I'm going to put this All right so look at the formula it's the same now I'm going to reserve this later I'm going to reserve this a little bit later I want you to see the, the, the reference a little bit different later so I'm going to tell you that uh, the dynamic reference of it how, how do we do it right so what is going to happen next here is that if I add in new data if I add in new data here now let me just be a bit lazy I just copy this uh, first two record make a copy and I push it down here do you see any difference in the answer the answer is no right it's still E5 to E10 you see that they are stuck with this range okay? they are stuck with this range you see that, that selection yeah it will be still stuck until E10 it will not include the new record that is given here now I'm going to remove them they are not very good so I would like to introduce a function to everyone that is I believe is a little bit classical it's a quite a classical function which is called offset right the function is called offset 
uh, this function eh? now let me just uh, do it like I'm actually writing a formula but I put an apostrophe in front um, so what do they need in the offset function now in the offset function what they are going to ask you is where is your starting cell your starting now let me just put in in layman language lah, eh? St starting cell your starting cell can be only a single cell it cannot be a range of cell it can be only one cell now to begin with the function offset as the name suggests is actually to move your starting cell somewhere else so that that's the purpose besides that offset will also be able to help you make a range of cell so you have to define what is the what is the high and what is the width so i will talk about that in in shortly eh? so Number, the first thing you need to tell them is your starting cell. Where are you starting? So if you are starting somewhere and you want to move it, then how many row do you want to move? Then followed by how many column you wish to move. So row as in like if you are moving it down, then it's a positive, positive value. But if you are moving it upwards, then it's a negative value. So you can put a positive or a negative number in that case. It is a number. Column in, in that case, they are moving left or right. So if you are moving to the right, it's a positive number. But they are moving to the left, it's a negative number. So it depends on where is your starting cell. Okay. Now, comma. That's where comes in the important information that I, I want to share with you. So we are going to use the offset to find out how many records are there in total that I want to use it for my sum. Now, this is a very classic formula that you can still use and it still works. I'm going to give you a few examples how you can actually become a very good formula. Now, the next thing that you need to tell them is the width. How wide is your selection? Is it... So, I, I think I made a mistake. It's not the width. It's the height. Yeah. How tall is your selection in the first place? Right. Suddenly, it just kicks in. All right. Now, how tall? When you say how tall is the selection, that means that's going to be like how many row. Now I always mix up with width and, and height in, in, in some cases. Eh? When when I want to explain, then I realize hey, I made a mistake. So it's like the height. So that is how many row. Right? Then lastly, the width. Now both this height and width comes with a default value. It's one. Both cell, uh, sorry, both row and column, they come with a default value which is zero. So these are some of the things that you're going to write later. It looks complicated, but after a few practice, you you will you will like it. You will like this formula. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see. I'm gonna show you all the tips here, but you can choose the easiest one to use. Right? This is not the easiest, of course. Huh? This will be the hardest. I'll start with the hardest. So this is where you are going to use this formula. But I'm gonna write this formula somewhere hidden. Huh? Somewhere hidden. Now, what I mean by somewhere hidden is that I'm going to write it inside here, the word amount. I don't want to write it inside this formula here, which I can do. All right, so I'm going to do this now in front of you. So I say equals to sum. Now I'm going to write offset, offset, and I'm going to tell them, please start here. Start at E5, All right, start at E5, comma, now, since I'm already at that position, that total position, then I don't have to move it. So I'm going to put there 0, 0, 0. Then what about the height? Okay, the height is how many row? Now, I'm not going to come here and say, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then I'm going to put a 6 here. Now, this will defeat the purpose of writing the function anyway. So this is where I'm going to embed a function here. Right? I'm going to put it into a count function. So why I'm using the count function because I want them to count only the numbers, right? Only the numbers. So therefore, I'm going to count. Open a bracket. I'm going to start from here. E five. Now let's just say I anticipated that my number of row will not exceed five hundred. So I'm going to put that. Now if you say yes, it's going to be more than five hundred. Then put five thousand. If five thousand is still not enough, fifty thousand is it enough? Not enough. Five hundred thousand is it enough? Now, you cannot put 5 million, of course, huh? because the maximum is 1 million row. So now, I'm not going to make that big of uh, data. I'm just going to make like 50 will do. Then I'm going to close it. Now, what's happening here is 
they are going to count from E5 to E50. How many cells are there in this range contains number? Because I'm using count. Yeah, I'm using count. So that that's count means I'm going to count numbers. So I'm going to put a close bracket and then comma. Now the last one is the width. My selection, how many columns are there? Just one. So I'm going to put one. Now if I don't put the one, I'm actually quite okay because the default value is one. All right, so I'm going to close it. I'm going to complete the formula like this. Close bracket. Let's see if I can get the answer 12876680. Yeah, I'm still going to get that. Now the formula looks a little bit too overwhelmed. Right? The formula looks a little bit too overwhelmed for many people. So why you do a sum, then you have an offset inside. So to avoid any query, to avoid any query, what we can do is that we use the name for that range and we use the name to represent this formula. So let me write this formula one more time. Eh? So I'm going to this thing called the formulas name range. So I'm going to write the formula one more time. Let me just pull this one up a little bit. So amount. So I'm going to highlight this. Equal. Right, equal. Equal what? Of set. Now the way you're going to write it here is the way that I wrote it down there just now. But this time I'm not going to type in the, the cell. I'm, I'm not typing in any of the cell. I'm going to use my mouse to do the selection. So I'm going to click on E5. You notice when I do that, it actually comes up with Excel reference E5. Excel reference is my worksheet name followed by the cell itself. Huh? So I'm going to put a comma. Then I'm going to put 0, comma, 0, comma. Now, why, why is it that I'm going to put that 2, 0 in, in here? It's because I'm going to tell them, start from E5, don't go anywhere. 0, row, 0, column. So they are not going anywhere. Uh, so that's that's what I am planning to do. Now the next thing that is going to happen is I want them to do the counting. Remember, I was writing the function called count. So I count. So I'm just going to start from now. Open bracket. I'm going to start from B. Uh, sorry, E5. So again, let me zoom in. Let me show you. I say count. Open bracket. Then followed by E5. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a colon. So that it will also, oops, sorry, let me just do this again. So E5, then I quickly put a colon and it will say E5 to E5. Remember, I just put 50 just now. Uh, so it's the same thing that I'm doing earlier, right? E5 to E50. So if you think 50 is too little, you can put 500 or else 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000. It's just up to you. But I'm just going to stick with 50 so I don't have a, such a big number. Then put a close bracket, comma, 1. Now, this is the exact formula that I have written out here. Right, so let me check if my formula has any issue. Huh? Now, when you, when you come here, you want, the, you want a name to represent the formula. You just check if the formula works. Huh? Let's click the check button here. If there's a pop-up, that means something is wrong somewhere. So it's quiet. Kudos, huh? we got it done. So same formula that we have written. So I'm going to... Make a copy of this. Make a copy of that. I'm going to paste it out here soon. Eh? So let me just put it up here. Uh, yeah, this one. I'm going to apostrophe with that. So that's the formula that I have written. Now I'm going to show you all the formula. I'm not going to hide anyone anything from you guys. Sorry, I pressed the wrong thing. Yeah, this is the formula. It's the same thing. All right, this one and. This is the formula I use for the amount. Same thing, same thing. Okay, now, it's a lot shorter when I write it out here. But uh, when I write it inside, it comes with the reference. Now, the good news is this. If I go to another new worksheet now, right, it can be anywhere outside here. This is what I'm going to do. Equals to sum amount. I get the same answer. You see that? I don't have to write equal to sum Offset, then I go there and click, 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 enter and we get the answer. Now I'm only using the form. Okay, let me show you the formula text here. I'm only using the 
same function that I wrote just now, sum amount. So I'm making it very dynamic now where I can use this formula anywhere in my workbook, the word amount. Because amount is not represent as a range of cell, but it's actually representing uh, what you call it? A formula. The word amount representing a formula. So why, Kelvin, why are you making life so difficult? It's, it's not difficult. The setup, the setup looks like a lot of work, right? But you will love it later. Now, let's take a look at all these numbers now. Let's take a look at all the numbers, huh? Okay, all these numbers that I'm using. So if I go, if I highlight two rows here, copy, I put it down here now. And I pull down this answer here. Right? This is actually a formula. I pull it down. You notice everything else changes. Right? So except for this one, it will still be E5 to E10. Yeah, you see this? This is still E5 to E10. But I added new item here. The moment there is a total, you will notice that this is dynamically changing. So the amount is actually has an offset function. The sum itself has an offset function. So that, that will help. That will help. All right. So these are some of the things that you can do. Just, just a bit of it. Huh? Now, I started off with something so difficult. You will kill me later when I show you how easy it can be. Huh? But yeah, I just want you to understand this one. It's a very classical kind of a formula that you can use. I, I call this classical because I don't use it anymore. Now, why? Because there are easier ways for us to do that. This is how we do it last time, long, long time ago, when the new feature wasn't wasn't uh, populated yet. Huh? Now, let's talk about writing the formula for online, direct, and retail. Let's talk about that. Huh? So let's drop this for a while. We'll still come back to this. Definitely, all this is going to be uh, in effect, but I, I just want you all to see what else we can do. Huh? Now, I'm going to name Okay, let me just remove this set here. I'm going to name this column as direct, this column as online, this column as retail. So all I need to do is just highlight the title with the six value below them. I just go to this formula and I choose create from selection. So I'm going to use the top row, which is the direct online and retail as the individual name for the column. So that's what I'm doing. Now, when I do that, if I go to my name box, I will see direct, online, and retail. So if I go online, they tell me this is the range. If I go to redirect, uh, I go to retail. Yeah, that's how they actually uh, select the names, right? So I already done that. Then I want to come here. I want to know what is the total for online. So I put that equals to sum online. That's it. And when I use the name online, it works here and it will give me this answer. So if I put here equals to sum, I'm going to put in the uh, name here, which is called direct. Now, if I use my mouse to highlight, I can still get it. It's called direct. Now, this range of cell will forever has a name. Right? So it's called direct. I can do it that way or I can just put here some uh, retail. That's it. That I have all my total done. But this total here, I'm not going to write any offset for that matter. No, um, I'm not going to go through that hassle again. So I'm going to just leave them alone. So what happened if I add in new data? Now I want them to change as well. Now here comes the magic. Right? Here comes the magic. Eh? Now Saiful has already released the magic to you, but I'm going to extend, extend from what Saiful has said. Now I'm going to convert this information that I have on my on my left this table into a table, into a table. Now I'm going to use this keyboard shortcut here. It says that Control T. You can go to Insert Table. So I'm going to use Control T. Right. So I'm going to do that. All right. So let me press press Control T. So they say that uh, you are going to convert A4 to F10. Um, and my table has a header. Yes, my table has a header. So that's how it goes. Now, for me, I do not really like to make my table so colorful. I will just put it back to none. I'll just leave it like it's normal. 
and I do not want any of those filter because that's not my subject matter at the moment. Huh? I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to take away. Now, everyone will look at this like, oh, that is back to normal. Now, it's back to normal by formatting. But this information now is no longer a range. It's actually a table. So when I click this, there is a table design up here. I'm going to name this from table one, I'm going to change it to another ta another name. So I'm going to call this one as sales data. Oops, I think I must have my caps lock on. Okay, let me remove that. So I'm calling it sales data. So this table now is called the sales data, right? So now let me let me show you a few advantage of doing this. Eh? Now my my purpose here is that I want to write a percentage. And uh, what I have done is I already put in the formatting here called percent. So let's see how it works. Huh? I'm going to write my formula in F5. That's it, no? F5. Look what happened when I complete my formula. Huh? When I click this equals to E5, but when I click it, it doesn't show E5, but it shows there at total. That means you are actually inside the table and you are actually using the title called total. And you're going to divide it by this grand total here. This grand total. Okay, this grand total. I'm not even using the rest, you know. I'm using this, which is E5 to E10. Uh, I'm using this. So let's press. Uh, let's make sure this one is locked. Because when it copy down, we want them to stay. So we're going to copy and I'm going to press enter. Now, I'm not going to copy it down, but this is going to be done automatically for me. So you notice that it's actually referring to the same total because I lock it, right? I lock it. Uh, oops. Now this is the total. You notice that it actually just fill it down. I don't have to fill it down myself. I only write one formula. Now let's look at the overall total here. Can you all pay attention to all this total that I have? Huh? All this total, total, uh, this total, the direct total, the retail total. Huh? I'm going to make another copy of this, okay? Another copy of this. If no, no, without the total, without the total, eh? copy. Then I come down here. I'll paste it. You notice that the formula will automatically fill up, fill up, and the answers here changes. Now, if you missed it, let me just show you again. This is one two eight seven six six. Okay, look carefully. Yeah, one two eight seven six six. Eh? And the range is E5 to E10. So let me just delete this and copy and paste again. Just copy this and paste. Now you notice now the range is no longer E5 to E10 but E12. That's why the total changes as well. All right, so that's how powerful a table can be to make your entire work here dynamic. So what you need to do? You just have to change this information into a table and uh, the rest is taken care when you extend your new record. However, not all situation your bosses like you to change this into a table. Not all situation you are allowed to change into a table. Therefore, I took the liberty to teach you the offset first. If you can remember the offset, good. Otherwise, you can watch this uh, recording, which is going to be in the uh, Sifu time. You can watch this over and over again. All right. Now, I'm going to show you something extra here. All right. Something extra here. Now, what happened if I have a list of uh, names of all the cars? So, I have the um, the cars, right? So, C-A-R-S, cars. Now, if I, if I type here like Toyota, I have like Proton. I have like um, Honda. So there will be a few more, correct? There will be a few more items. Now I want to make this into a drop down list. So I want to have a drop down list. Okay, drop down list. Huh? So when I want to build a drop down list, this is what we normally do. We will go to the data, what if analysis. We'll drop a list. We tell them we want to have a drop down list. Okay. And the source is just this one. This item here. So we just click OK. 
So let me just color this cell so that you know that this is the drop down list over here. So if I click this, I will have my Toyota, Proton and Honda. Now, question, if I'm going to put in here another car maker, BMW, all right? Um, I'm going to put in like uh, MERS, right? What else? Um, what else do I have? Uh, maybe I'll put in there uh, Daihatsu. Is that how I spell it? Yeah, that sounds better. Now, Daihatsu and, and so on, right? We have, what do you think about the list? It doesn't expand. Right? It does not expand. So I'm going to remove this. Right? I'm going to remove this. They are, these are the three items that I have. So I'm going to press here and press Control T. You know what's Control T? And it has a header. Okay. Right. Now, let's take a look. If I put this as Toyota Proton Honda, if I come down here now and I put here BMW, let's see what happened in this list. I have my BMW. What happened down here? If I put in MERZ, then I have my MERZ. So the list continue and this list will expand by itself. Now, there's no reason for you to do so many things. Each time you have a new item in your list, you have to go back, come here and change all this yourself. No, you don't have to do that. All right, take note, huh? you don't have to do that. So you just have to start with the original list, then add, then remove whatever that you have added. Just make sure that it start with the three list that you originally have. You make that as a table, and then they will follow through every time you add on from there. Are we clear? So yeah, I, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about a table only. You're gonna hear a lot of things about table very soon from my next uh, colleague, Shabina. All right, so I'm going to call upon Bina. Hi, Karin. Good morning. Yeah, let me add you to the spotlight since somebody put her into spotlight. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Karin. Wow, yeah, yeah. there were so many things I learned today. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Thanks to Eugene. Thanks to Saiful and Kelvin. And you know what, Kelvin? We are going to share the same topic. I'm going to go uh, more on the smart table side later. Yes, I, I know. I know that's that's your line. So I I don't want to cross over. So I I just touch Thank a little you bit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But it is fun, right? It's fun, right? To see sometimes something like wow, this is so magic. All the while you've been doing like a manual table. You clean data manually, drag, 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 drag. Each and every day you've been dragging the whole whole table again and again so it's time for you to convert your table to something smart and magic isn't it so yeah. that's gonna be I, I always i always tell my student everyone thank you for attending my class i know you are already the specialist in copy and paste yes i'm going to make you the master of copy and paste so that i always tell them a lot of copy and paste tricks uh, then now with this table they don't even need to copy and paste. They don't don't need to Seriously. do a lot of things. Yeah. Seriously, just, just and the amazing. offset function, the offset function is kind of like headache, a huge disaster. Once once upon a time when I want to learn that offset function, I thought that <laughs> alama, alama, headache, headache. But now I see luckily I got the master table, the smart table. It yeah. is it is so fun to work with the table. Seriously. And, so, and I, you know I want to bring I want to bring all the trainer back to the old age yeah, where we do offset. I don't think a lot of us still remember how to do it because now we don't need to do that. Yeah. That's, that's the reason. Yeah. 20 yeah. years back, we didn't have all these smart tables when we work with those uh, 2003 version, XP version. It was like disaster, isn't it? When you want to talk about the data, key in data, copy down the formula and so forth. But now we have the table in the Excel to help mm. us to, you know, to manage uh, big data after this. So I'm looking forward to share more. Wow. Headache. Seriously, headache. Uh, Offset is really a headache. Yeah. Did you, did you see the flow where how, how we actually go through just now from Eugene? Uh, okay, yeah. So Eugene taught us about the cell, the formatting. Those, those are important tips that everyone should know about how to how, how to net, uh, what can I identify what kind of content do you have in your excel then from there saifu help us to make things a lot easier now to clean up our messy data 
So I, I didn't talk about messy data. Look yes, at my messy. data, it was so clean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks to Sefo, it's so clean. And uh, yeah. here am I telling you how to use the, the dynamic reference. So I guess uh, it's going to get a lot easier after after my session. Um, Vina, you're going to show them the magic how to actually make work and life should be enjoyable using Excel. I got yeah. seven to eight even 10 magic but i'm not sure whether i have enough time or not i'll try my best to give all the magic within the given time okay okay all right thank the, you the floor is yours. for the wonderful session and i'm looking forward to share and see more from you guys thank you so much guys all right so, hello hi assalamu alaikum and a very good morning malaysia wow this is the carnival the virtual trainer carnivals uh william uh, volume two and this is excel madness day i'm Bina, Bina manafi i'm so excited to be here today to, to 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 show you some of the tips and tricks in microsoft excel especially the smart table feature what is that smart table? Oh yeah, by the way, uh, myself, my full name is Shabena B. Binti Muhammad. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Been training for more than 20 years and I hope with this, uh, you know, uh, training carnival and with all my, you know, uh, trainers and they are also very expert in their field. And we look forward to give you more and more until 5.30 p.m. today. So stay, stay tuned everybody, guys. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. going to show you more tips and tricks of the world. Come, I show you my sample now. Okay, so this is my Excel. <laughs> okay, I am not nervous. I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm cool. And I'm enjoying my session now. And this is for you, Malaysia. Manual table versus smart table. And it is in Bandera, Malaysia. We are going to our Merdeka Day. Do, 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 do. Merdeka Day soon. Okay, anyway, come back to the topic. The topic is about table. Just now, Saifu mentioned about your, you know, how to prepare table in Excel. So as Kelvin, this table has many, many, many automatic features inside. I have seven, eight magics to show you now. Seven magic to show you. Okay, but before that, what is what does it mean by manual table? Come, I show you the sample now. Hey, this is my table. On the left is my Excel table. But it's just a table, not yet a border, not yet having border, color, or whatever. Just a simple data set. On the right, it is an Excel table. But when we say table, right, people tend to say, ah, table, just table. I call it smart table. Smart table. Because it has seven smart tricks, actually more than that. But now, can we go into, let, let me go into the sample, okay? The manual table on the left is all about the manual tricks. You know, all the while you've been highlighting the table, highlighting the table, you go to the home, you click the format, you go to the border and select all borders. Huh, okay, the table is there with the border and maybe you want to color the table. There's you go. Okay, you can color the table, you can give some gray color, black, blue, or whatever you want. Huh, that's the table. Okay, so manual, you got to color all by yourself. But on the right, that is the smart table. The smart table already applied and it can do wonders. Come, I show you one of the trick. The smart table automatic because if I wish to color the smart table, I just go to the table design menu. Oh yeah, by the way, how do you know the table is smart or not? That's a tip. If I click the menu table, I don't have the menu called table design menu on top there. But if I go to the smart table and click, Wow, I have the table tools design menu on top there. The table tools design menu is the indicator for the smart table. So if someone asks you, hey, how do you know that's smart or not? You just show them the menu, the menu table tools design or table design for Excel 365. Okay, so here in the ribbon at the right corner of the ribbon, you can see a group called table style. You just click the arrow and choose your favorite color. I love yellow color. So I select yellow and there is my smart table. But you know, sometimes when you work, when you print, you don't want colorful background, you can change the table to something like bright and easy to read. But now nah, I'm not that kind of person. I love to have some fun colors on my screen. So I go to the yellow color background. There you see your smart table is in, okay? Anyway, let's talk about the color later. Okay, guys, so let me show you the first magic of the day. 
the smart table magic where you just click the table and let's convert this table to smart. Just now, um, Calvin mentioned about the menu, insert table and table button. That's the icon. Or else, shortcut is control T. I just click the table. I press control and T on the keyboard. And that's my smart table range. It's highlighting from the cell B, column B to column G, and my table has header, you must check. Else, your table will get different headers and you'll be having another headache. So my table has header is referring, referring to, the, to the very first row of the title where I have the number, date, payment date, and so forth. I just click OK to change the table to a smart table. There you go. Wow, that's my magic number one. My magic number one is the table automatically colored and auto formatted. Wow, fun, right? Ah, this is the first magic. You don't have to sit down there, highlight, white, green, blue, color, right? You just control the convert the table to smart. And let me go to the second magic. Wow, the second magic. It can expand by itself. Guys, you don't have to highlight, 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 like what you did to your manual table. Come, I show you the manual table trick first. I go back to my old table, the boring table. If I wish to type something here, say I want to know the total, total, and the, nah, it doesn't give me, it doesn't give me the border, it doesn't give me the color, and I have to highlight and border and color all by myself. Wow, this is so, 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 no, it's like, so many things to be done here. Or some people, they know how to copy paste or maybe some, some people know how to format Painter. That'd be great. But then, no more after this. The beauty is <clears throat> your smart table can expand by itself. Come, i show you the second magic. The second magic is when I click beside the last column of the smart table and I type the total and the, there you see the table expands by itself and die. The table is auto expand. Not only that, if I type something down below, the table expands down too. For example, I type number 10 and press enter. There you see the table is increased, is increasing its range and color and format and so forth. So the table is, auto expand it can automatically expand to right or bottom by itself so you don't have the hustles to highlight and and you know convert the column to to different border or color or whatsoever you don't have to do that you know it saves a lot of time here okay now i'm going to the next magic but wait 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 wait, wait. before i go to the next magic let me ask you some question uh, yeah i know you guys like ab you are so fast lah. can we just Recap something, something on the first part. Okay, let me go back, go back, go back to the first one. This is the smart table, okay? For some reason, you say, hey, B, uh, is there any condition for the smart table? Can we, go, can we go to any table and just control P? If you ask me that question, I got some conditions to tell you. If you wish to convert your table to smart table or automatic table, condition number one, it only works with vertical layout or vertical table. It means that your table must be in horizontal, I mean in vertical, where it has the title on top, the first row with title and the bottom row with the data. Okay, similar to this vertical table. If your table is horizontal, you can copy and transpose, transpose to vertical. The reason, what's the reason? I must have a reason, isn't it? Okay. If you go to vertical order of your Microsoft Excel, if you see the number of rows, let me just click one empty cell here and control arrow down. It shows your Excel can go maximum 1 million of 1 million 48,576 rows in Excel. Just imagine that 1 million rows can go there. Wow, okay, but then if I scroll to right, if I control right to the right most of the table, it has only XFD, which is about 16,000 plus of columns, 16,000 columns. 
it is not sufficient for my data. You know, sometimes I be I might be having fifty thousand, sixty thousand, even hundred thousands of row uh, information. So sixteen thousand column doesn't, uh, you know, they, they they don't really, uh, you know, can can work with my big data column and uh, column. So that's the reason why most of the table in vertical order. When we talk about database, data set, they all in vertical order. And that's why Microsoft Excel table or smart table only work with vertical table. It doesn't go to horizontal table, okay? Come, I show you my next step. Okay, so the first condition is table must be vertical. Second condition, in the table, you shouldn't have any merge. Shouldn't have any merge. Let me show you. What do I mean by that? Let me highlight some of the data here. Say I got uh, Berlin and Berlin. Ah, I got Berlin, Berlin. I got MasterCard, MasterCard, Visa, Visa. I got some data here. And I try to merge them. Let me show you how. I highlight MasterCard, MasterCard. I go to Home Menu, Alignment, and my, master, my, my Merchant Center is not working. Uh oh Merchant Center is not working with the Smart Table. So it seems that the smart table doesn't support merchant center. Why? Why, why, why? Let me tell you a secret. Why merge is not good for your table and why must a smart table doesn't support the merge data. Come, I'll show you a secret. I come back to my table here. Let me just quickly copy my data just to show you the idea. I copy this table. I scroll to right, to the right, and I just paste here. A quick idea, okay? And you know what, guys? Sometimes we tend to merge data. Suka suka hati, go and merge, highlight, highlight, merge. Da, da, da. I can merge because it's a manual table. I go and highlight, highlight, highlight some data here, merge. Wow, that's good. But now I tell you the problem disaster. When I try to filter or sort. But before that, let me just quickly undo. And do to show you the original data. Over here, we have one, two, two MasterCard, isn't it? Two MasterCard, and there are few. There are few Visa card. But let's say I go and merge data, make them one. And see, when I go to filter data, I try to filter my data. Give me a second. Okay, I go to my data menu and I select filter button and check it out. Let's say I want to filter by MasterCard. You guys know, I know it, there are two MasterCard, right? But let me go and filter MasterCard. I go deselect all, I choose MasterCard. Okay, uh-oh. There's another MasterCard. Missing, it's not there. What happened? Alamak. The merge, the merge eventually go and take out the other MasterCard, discard the other MasterCard, okay? So this explains that the merge and uh, merge is not good for your database because it can spoil your content, it can spoil the number of rows in the table, it can spoil the, the story of the table or the content of the table. So it's not a good practice, you see? I was having two MasterCard just now and now I have only one, the other one has been discarded. How do I know it has been discarded? Come, I show you. I go to the payment type and there's a one icon here, a one item here called blank. Oops, I think I don't have any blank, right? So I just click blank button, okay. Ha, huh. the other cell is a blank cell. So this really changed my original source. Guys, merge is not good for your database, okay? So please don't merge, okay? Now, how to troubleshoot this thing? I got to click and clear all. I have to remove my merge button, unmerge, and I got to pull down. Luckily, got two. Many? Ha, huh, I give you one problem. Let's say here got merge, here got merge. Okay, I go and merge. I suka suka hati merge, you know, everything I merge, 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 merge. And there you see so many merge inside here. And then I, I heard B, B, my name is B, by the way. I heard B say convert to smart, convert to smart table. So I go and convert this table to smart. I just click the table. See, I click the table and I go to control T on the keyboard. I press control T. There you go. 
entire range is highlighted. Table has header is checked. Okay. Uh oh. The merge is now unmerged. My smart table is very smart, telling me that show sure, you should not have any merge data inside there. And all the merge become unmerged, isn't it? But then how to fill in the blank? Are we going to click, pull down, click, pull down, click, pull down for 100 times? We don't have enough time. I'm given only 10, 30 minutes here. <laughs> okay, so let me show you some quick trip, some quick trick how to fill down the blank cells. Okay, very easy. First rule, you got to highlight the blank range. I mean, the, 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 the range with data, okay? In this case, I highlight the range between column A and AB. And on the keyboard, I use control G, G for gaja, <laughs> G for go to. So I control G. And this control G is actually in the home menu editing group. And you can go to the button, find and select, and go to it's somewhere here, home menu. And uh, you can find that. Let me show you the menu. Lah, eh? Go to home menu, editing group, find and select. There is the go to. Click the go to, and you have a special button down there. What does it mean by special? I have a special request. I want to fill down the blank cells inside the table. So I go to the special and there are so many options here. My plan is to fill in the blank cells. So I click the blank option here and I click OK. There you see. Wow, all the blank cells are now highlighted. So what's next? I got to create some reference to tell, hey, table, follow that reference, okay? So to do that, I type equal on the keyboard, the equal sign on the keyboard. There you see, there's an equal sign waiting for your instruction. So I click the text above the equal sign, which is MasterCard. But why MasterCard? Because I want to pull down. I want to pull down and let that MasterCard down into the next cell, isn't it? So I use the MasterCard as my reference. And if I were to copy into multiple cells, I don't press enter. Don't press enter. Why? Enter returns only one answer. You got multiple empty cells, right? You use control, enter, control, enter. Wow, that's how I get my data in. See, I have done the magic here. I convert merge data into unmerged smart table, and then I fill in the blank cells. And to make these cells independent, not moving, not changing later, I highlight the range, right click, copy, and I just paste value back to itself, back to the cells. So they know, okay, they, they are now independent cells. They got no reference to change or whatsoever. Okay, anyway, done with that. So the condition number two for smart table, there, are, there should be no merge inside the table, okay? So condition number three, guys, number three, your smart table doesn't support blank headers. So if you want to create smart table, make sure you have some headers on top there. In case I delete the headers, Smart will give me a temporary list of headers. Okay, I got column one, two, three, four, five, that it won't allow me to blank the headers. Okay, that's good for my pivot report or my charts or whatsoever. Okay, so that's the rule. Three rules, guys, three rules. Rule number one, vertical table. Number two, no merge inside. And number three, you got to have some headers on top there. Okay, now let me go to the next magic. So magic number one, auto format. Magic number two, auto expand, you know already. Now let me go to magic number three. Magic number three is one of the best part of Microsoft Excel. You know, once upon a time when you type formula, you got to pull down, pull down the formula, isn't it? But now no more. When I type formula in here, I type equal. Where a piece of Yanaki, what is Yanaki? I don't know, don't ask me. But I know the price is $22.95. That's the price. Multiply by quantity. One unit, buy two. <laughs> One unit, $22, you buy two, two unit, okay, two, quantity of two. Then you press enter, check the magic. I press enter, voila, chante. Everything is now into the, it's, I, mean, I mean, the answer is, displays by themselves, okay? This is so cool, isn't it? I don't have to pull down, pull down the formula. 
not like once upon a time, once upon a time, when I was in my manual table, I had to pull down the table one by one every day when I have some new information. Let's say I do this manual table, the same thing like I did to my smart table. Equal, the price, multiply, quantity, enter, take this out. So lazy bump, it doesn't go down. Oh, I got to click. I got to drag or I got to double click. There you see, manual table. So dependent. You so busy, you never come here. They pun tunggu, wait for you. Wait, wait, wait. Where is Bina? Come lah, pull me down. <laughs> okay, so that that's something like, you know, so, so, so manual, isn't it? So let's not try this trick anymore after this okay so i go back to my auto fill there you see my smart table is so smart can auto fill the column by itself just nice <sighs> i'm going to the next magic auto freeze hmm. what does it mean by auto freeze your smart table can pin the header pin the header let me scroll down, 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 down. Check this out. The headers are there on top. I never freeze the header. I never do any changes to the table. I just convert table to smart. As I'm moving down, 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 the headers remain there. So just imagine I got 1,000 of rows and the header, good headers are there on top. I don't have to scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down. Or some people, very, very smart, they go and freeze the header. Excellent, very good. But then the smart table is so smart, it can, it, it can do that, that magic for you, it can freeze the header, can pin the header. But then if I go back to my manual table, this is my manual table, so dependent, so lazy, I click the table, I scroll down, check what happened. Ding, 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 ding. Uh-oh. What is that? What is that? What are these things? I don't have the title. But when I click the smart table beside, ching, I got the title. So the smart table is so smart, so clever. It knows that I'm scrolling down. I need the title for some reason to identify, to analyze some data. So the smart table is there to make your life faster and easier. Okay, I mean more easier. In, in this case, you, you know what's going on in that table, which, is, which table is that, okay? So that's my magic number four. It is auto freeze or auto pin. It can freeze the header. And then when you go to some formula, it does freeze the column for the formula. I'll show you that later, okay? But now I'm going to the next magic, magic number five. That's about smart table auto capture. Ha, come, I show you what happened here. I got grand total $187.55. This grand total was captured from the range between um, cell H6 to H. Uh, this is the range, lah, okay? The amount of the range is. $187. And I do have another formula down there for my sum if where the data total, sum, sum total is taken for the visa card alone. Because I want to find total by visa. So visa alone returns me 145.65, okay, uh, income or total sales. So this is the story, okay? This is the, 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 the current scenario of the table. But you know what? Your smart table is so, so, so smart. It can capture new row all by itself. You don't need the offset function. You don't need to type any formula. You don't have to crack your head. It's like straightforward, okay? Wow, I can hear my voice. I can hear my voice. Somebody is like, um, okay, no problem. Come, let's continue. I go to the number here and I type some new info. Number six, the date. Today is the date. Today is 15 of August 2021. And I paid visa card. I use my visa card to buy Yanaki. What is that Yanaki? Biker, maybe. But the price is very cheap. Maybe mini HA, okay? So I'm buying the bike for the price of, let's say, $100 per bike. Wow, so cheap. It's okay. No problem. And by the way, Lazada having some, 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 some uh, sales, right? 
So you can go and check by yourself, okay? So anyway, I go to quantity. Let's say I'm buying the bike for two unit. Mm, two unit. I get the amount of $200. And the magic is the total visa is $345.65. I remember it's, it was like $148 something. And the grain total also changed to $387. The whole range is now expanded by itself. The data has kept, I mean, the smart table has captured the new entries. Okay, you can copy paste, you can type by yourself. As you key in, key in, key in, your table expand, expand, expand. And that's how you save your time. You don't have to copy down, you don't have to drag down, you don't have to insert row in between. And this really, really magic, I tell you. Please convert your table to smart. You save some time over here. Okay, come. So that's the magic number five. <sighs> <laughs> okay, now let me go to magic number six, auto-calculate. Wow, what does it mean? What does it mean by auto-calculate? Okay, let's say this is the scenario. I am having a table here, some numbers inside, and I need to calculate the total or the average or the count or max or mean or whatever. The problem is, one, maybe I'm so lazy to type formula, or two, I may not, I, I don't know the formula. I don't know the formula. Sometimes happen, right? So how to do some quick analysis in the table using smart table? Come and show you. I click the table. That's my smart table, you know, right? Okay, smart table. Then when you click smart table, you'll get your table tools design menu. That is the indicator for the smart table. So when you go to table design menu, you have a long ribbon. Come and read from the left. You got the property, the property, and then you got the tools, and then you have the external table data. And now we have the table style option. And that's where I want to do some changes now. So in the table style option, I select total row. Total row. That will now create a calculated row for me. So I click that total row and there you see a magic. There's one row appear all of a sudden at the bottom of the table. And you know what, guys? You can do many, many tricks here. For example, uh, I want to know how many transactions happened so far, how many days I got sales. You know, for example, in this particular table, I can go to the data date column. And beside the total, there's a small tiny arrow in, in that cell. I click the arrow and I got some ready-made calculation. Example, I want to know um, a number of transactions happened so far. So I click count. Wow, I got five transactions happened so far in the table. Hmm. I want to know the average sales or average price of this table. So I click and I can choose average. See? Ah, or maybe for some cases, you don't want to show all this stuff. You can just click and choose none and none back to the original empty cell. And maybe you want to have some total quantity, just total income and total quantity sold. So I just go and count or max or sum, depend on what I want. You see, everything is there. You just make sure you have a healthy mouse with you. Healthy mouse with you to click the arrow and choose your favorite functions. Okay, so guys, feel free, go around to the table, check, explore, experience, explore, and have fun with Microsoft Excel Smart Table. Okay, so this is my uh, magic number six. Wow, this is good, magic number six. Okay, you can do some calculation. Okay, wait, some people did ask me this question. Hey, B, what if I want to have extra rows? I mean, I want to key in data. Where do I type? Do I type down below? Can I touch something below the total? No, nope. never do that. Never go below total and type number six. That become alien, that become stranger. The number six is not part of your smart table. Please don't do that. So how to create number six or row number six or input number six? I got two magic or two tricks for you. I delete the number six there, okay? So magic number one, trick number one, to insert the number six or row number, uh, the, the, the next uh, following rows, you may go to the 
you may go to the smart table design menu or table tools design menu and you just can uncheck the total row and you can continue your data entry if you have like say you got to copy a big bunch of data into your smart table you can just uncheck the total row copy paste and just select the total row once again that's magic number i mean trick number one or else, if in case I want to maintain the total row, and I say, hey, I just want to continue some row down below that before the total, okay? So I just click the last most cell in the column total sales, which is my row number five, the total sales of row number five, and I hit that button, T-A-B, that button on the keyboard. I hit button and that increases my table. Check this out. So if you were to key in data one by one, one by one, one by one, you just press tap, 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 tap. But if you've got a bunch of data to copy paste inside here, don't put tap. You just uncheck the total row and just copy paste data, expense table, and then on the total row once again. So that's how you manage your smart table, calculated columns and calculated rows, okay? <sighs> this is good, right? I love smart tables so much. Now, the, la the next last trick for the day before I hand over my presentation to my colleagues and so forth. Okay, let me go to the next trick. That is my slice and dice data. Okay, this is my next trick, magic number seven. Okay, actually there are 10, 15 magic slab, but I just take the main one, okay? This is my magic number seven, the slicer, where you can slice and dice the data. Wow, this is slice and dice data feature. Okay, and this out. My database, just a cute small database, right? If I were to filter some data inside here, the old practice, once upon a time, what I did was I click the table, I go to data, I select sort and filter, but in this case, because smart table, right? Let me go back to my manual table. Huh, this is my manual table. The, 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 the lazy bum table. Okay, this is the one. I click the table, the manual table, and I see the data menu, and I go to the filter button, and I can see some filter arrows. And let's say I want to filter by Yanaki, I go to click uh, the arrow and click the Yanaki, uncheck all, Yanaki. Okay, so that's how I filter my data once upon a time. <sighs> so manual, but now no more. I go back to my slice and days data, which is, which is my my last trick of the day. Okay, in the magic number seven, you have some, uh, you know, this called slicers, slicers, there's this object called slicer at the right corner of your screen here. It's called slicers, okay? The slicers are there because of your smart table. If I don't have smart, I don't have slicers in this case. So what's the purpose of using slicers and how to get those slicers first of all? Okay, let me show you how to remove and get the slicers back on the screen. Let me just click this object and I press delete on the keyboard. There you see, it's gone. I hit the table, I mean the slicer, I press the delete on the keyboard. Gone, no more slicers. Now let me show you how to re get back or how to return the slicers, okay, on the screen. First of all, this is what I do. My normal practice is I click the header of the table. And you'll be asking me, why not the... The 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 the, what, the the cells. Why must the header? Uh, that's part of my practice. <laughs> okay. Anyway, if you click the cell, the cell tend to hide, tend to move, isn't it? And the slicer will move through. That's the logic, lah. So to make the slicer static in a place, I love to click at the header of the table. Okay. That's where the the, the slicer, the position of the slicer will be static too. Okay. That's the logic. So I click the header of the uh, of the table, and I just go to the you know to the uh, smart table design menu, and there is a button in the design menu in the group of tools, a button called insert slicer. Ha! Ah, this powerful button is hidden here. But guys, those with old version, version 2007 or 10, Excel 2007, 2010, very, very sorry. The slicers, the slicer icon is not there in the ribbon for your version. But for 2010, you can see slicer in your pivot table uh, ribbon later. 
only for seven, you do not have slicer. I'm very, very sorry about that. Anyway, let's go back to the story. I click the header, I go to the table design menu, and I choose insert slicer. Click that. Cha. Okay, now what is that? Huh. I want to filter Yanaki. Yanaki. Yanaki is inside the product table. And I want to know Yanaki by Visa card. I go to the payment type. There are two checkboxes here. Tick, 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 okay. Then the rest I don't select. Um, you can take them if you want. I will show you the file later in the link. You can try all this by yourself. And now let me just go to OK button. And there you see my slicers. Wow, chante, chante, chante. I like this method. Okay. Anyway, if you see the slices are very, very boring, the colors like blue, 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 you can change the slicers by clicking the menu of the slicer. Let me check. I click the first slicer. I go to the, oops, let me just go, okay. Go to the slicer menu and I choose my favorite slicer color. It can be red color, green, yellow, my favorite color, yellow there. Wow, 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 yellow color. Okay, click here, green, blue, okay. Maybe blue color, no, 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 yellow. Okay, just nice. Huh. If I want other color, possible. Just go and make new color down there. Okay, but we don't have enough time. My time is up now. So I just click Aspen. There you see my slicer now. Slice and dice data from Aspen. If I click Carlota, wow, just nice. Yanaki, cool. Wow, I got my Yanaki there. And this thing works fine with the Totoro. Let me get my Totoro. Where's my Totoro? Check this out. I got the Totoro quantity for the Yanaki sold for three. Oh, sold for seven units for the total income, $147. If I want to know how many Aspen I sold so far, Aspen, I got the amount for Aspen. Wow. If I want to clear filter, click, click, click. That's all. Okay. If I want to know the visa card income, I click visa card. And that's my income for visa card for the seven uh, unit sold. Ha, cantik kan? Hmm. So guys, if you say, hey B, we like the trick, but we don't like the color because you know, sometimes for some reason, printing purpose or whatever, I want to take out all the colors. No problem. You can maintain your smart table. You can maintain all this magic. If the color is the problem, you can take out the color from the table tools design. Choose any color that can suit your you know, maybe for the printing purpose or whatsoever. Or you can even go and change your favorite color down there. Okay, but why guys, I want you guys to convert your table to smart because it has so many smart tricks that saves your time and you can work with your work, maybe your data peacefully after this. You don't have to go back and highlight the table, go back and expand the table, go back and arrange the table again and again every single day. Let your smart table take control of the data set. You work peacefully with the formula, with the report, dashboard, colors, and so forth. I mean, the, 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 the dashboard presentation or reporting and so forth. And the smart table is the next level of this, uh, I mean, of your data set where you want to go into Power Query or you want to work with Power Pivot, you got to convert your table to smart first, okay? So you should learn, you should experience the benefit of this smart table, okay? It's really far better than your manual table and guys, trust me, you love it. You will love it, okay? Trust me. And I love to share this smart table with all my friends and my, my students every time I start my Excel class because I don't like to see them sad, you know, highlighting the range again and again. Some of them, they say, hey, my mouse is not working and so forth, right? So smart table is the best practice. If you want more details on the smart table Excel class, this is my number. You can contact me and stay safe in Malaysia. Thank you so much for attending my session. Have a good, great day ahead. Okay, whatever it is, stay safe, stay strong, stay at home. Okay, have a good rest after this. Happy weekend, Selamat Hari Merdeka, and don't forget to celebrate the National Day. Okay, bye-bye, take care. How about the rest, guys? I have done my part. Is anybody joining me after this? Bravo! <laughs> <laughs> awesome, so excited. Lah, so excited. Just ah, kan, the, 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 the problem with trainers tau. Dapat microphone kita susah nak stop. <laughs>
especially yeah, yeah, the yeah. magic part, ah, I cannot control myself. And I'm so geram to see this kind of uh, like a manual highlight and drag, highlight and drag. I thought better you stop that. <laughs> because you know why? Because you know why? Throughout our experience, kan, we have seen a lot of people using the application the wrong way, tau. Yes. Geram je kan hmm. so, All macam, the tricks that you have been Boleh tak Boleh tak Boleh tak convert far, kejap kan? Convert that smart table ah. <laughs> But not all the time lah Exactly So this is the reason, one of the reason why so, we are Our things Carnival kan uh, For others to learn And hopefully uh, They can apply this to their, their work kan uh, Hopefully dia tambah speed lah lepas ni So Kelvin How was it? Kelvin, unmute yourself. Tengok, dia terlalu excited <laughs> sampai lupa me. <laughs> tak, I I was like paying attention so much to what Fina is saying. Oh, banyak juga dapat belajar. So, thank you so much, man. Yeah, I, I think a little, little thing that is very important in our everyday work, we we, we overlook and uh, we didn't really go and find out and then we start doing it wrongly, right? Not, not to say we take so much time to actually achieve the result. But I think with your help just now, I, I believe a lot of people are there. You no, know, can 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 really make the difference in their in their workflow. Yeah. Mm. So so, so Hila, what do you yeah. think? Can we take a short video for I... 30 minutes? Ah uh-uh. ah. Yes yes. Go ahead go ahead go mm. ahead. Hmm. And um, can we call upon siapa ini? We have some of our our friends here in the group. Uh, in the Zoom, we have Inche Rizwan. Are you there, Inche Rizwan? And we have uh, Miss Alia from uh, Mizan Venture. Can you unmute and uh, switch on your video? Yeah. Kita nak tanya sikit na. <laughs> Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Where are you? Where are you? Kita uh, nak tengok juga. I'm, I'm Alia. <laughs> This is my husband. Ida. Hi. Hi. Um, we're from Kuantan, Pahang. Wow. So wow. Hi. Ah. Oh, makan roti, dek. Ah. Ah. Iklan, iklan. Iklan roti kejap. Uh, I, I, okay, sayang. Uh, we had a, uh, we are working with a lot of data in uh, what we're working in right now. So, and we had to deal with Excel um, in order to deal with the data management. Lah. So, there was like, what you said, a lot of manual work done. Um, yeah. A lot of things yang macam, manual work processes that led to a lot of error and unsalid data and i actually um, um my dad connected me to kelvin uh and he really helped a lot and he he set the smart table which is like the best thing that i think i've ever done in excel <laughs> <laughs> so um this has awesome. like a lot of work processes and helped a lot in my work and um the other departments connected And I, I, because Kelvin, like, you know, did it as a smart table, had to learn backwards from that. But by attending this session, I'm learning it, like, okay, from the bottom, but how to format. Oh. Oh, cool. um, so yeah. what, 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 what do you think of the session so far? We have, uh, we are finished with four trainers and we have another 11 more to go. I, so... I have not taken a break. So I think that's the <laughs> volume. Yeah. It's really engaging. It's really fun. Um, I really like uh, people be session just now. Like a lot of magic. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. We till you you watch uh starting from four o'clock or or three something you will see that it's getting a little bit more intense after that. <laughs> yeah, then mm. it's going I'm all the way to advance. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I, I so who else is there? Okay. We have Inche Asran. Are you there? Encik Azizi, can you unmute yourself? Is it possible? Ah, kita kita meet up. Oh, Dr. Gobi is in. Dr. Mm. Gobi is in. Wow. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Azizi. Hi. Assalamualaikum. It's fun. Yeah. Salam. Salam. Wow, very interesting. Lah, very interesting. Uh, I learned a lot today. Wow. Ah, alhamdulillah. 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 Good, alhamdulillah. Good to know you all. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> This is just the beginning, Azizi. All right. This is just the beginning. Ah, ni kalau kita kalau tengah movie tu kita orang ni baru teaser lah. <laughs> <laughs> intro lah, baru intro lah. Eh. Okay. So, so out of all the 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 areas yang that been shared kan, mm-hmm. mana yang you rasa macam the the wow factor? Yang you kata okay, wow. 
I think the first three presenter very good lah. Very very uh, excite me lah. <laughs> the first three presenter that then uh, the start after that uh, Puan uh, apa uh, uh, Puan Shabina uh, then I think I will stay until uh, this session uh, uh, complete lah today. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Tolong share share sekali dengan orang lain juga ni. Yeah yeah sudah Aida share dah. <laughs> oh, cool 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 cool. cool, cool. Uh, kan uh, sebab dia dia macam mana kami ni plan macam buat kereta lah first gear second gear third gear pass you know? the button pass the button oh, pass the button yeah. so as as pass the button ah uh, dia akan jadi lebih lebih tu lah lebih laju dan lebih exciting lah kot uh, yeah, insyaallah yeah. i think Malaysian yang uh, apa uh, buat training ni lagi lagi better lah kot daripada kita depend on YouTube punya presenter kan uh, ayah dia tengok juga hmm. tapi i think uh, a good lah Malaysian can do this Alhamdulillah. 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 This is actually our our second carnival. We did yeah. this last year, and uh, this is the the second round that we are doing this. And uh, kita specifically sebab uh, nowadays banyak Excel kan. Everybody is asking about Excel kan. Yeah. So that's the, the the main purpose why at this point kita buat Excel dulu. Uh, so good, kami good, yang baru good. dah lepas lepas ni memang lega. Lah. Mm, I love. Tengok muka kalian <laughs> sangat. <laughs> Saya suka, saya suka. Kita yang di belakang-belakang ni berada sebenarnya. <laughs> InsyaAllah, insyaAllah. Malaysia boleh, Malaysia boleh. Ha, <laughs> dia orang punya apa penangan bukan sikit-sikit tu. Besar-besar kita ni. Ha, InsyaAllah, insyaAllah. Ha, lagi nampak powerful, lah, expert, lagi I nampak powerful. expert kat sini. <laughs> so, uh, those in, 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 in Facebook chat, if you were to have any questions, so you may... Uh, chat with us and ask any kinds of question that this is the moment that you're going to use you know uh, this uh, another about 20 minutes or so ah uh, mak tunilah you nak tanya apa-apa soalan because the masters are here kecuali me the master oh, apa you cakap ni oh. okay we have here uh, you are the Asiran. leader puan asiran puan asiran uh, can you unmute yourself ah uh, puan asiran puan boleh puan unmute asiran asiran no oh, asiran asiran Assalamualaikum Puan Ashran. Oh, jangan ni. Ha. Wow, dia ada skill macam Siti lah. Duduk standstill. <laughs> Mungkin line line to work. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Carnival is very uh, amazing, awesome. So many tips and tricks I learned from this uh, Carnival. Uh, especially uh, Miss Bina so energetic. <laughs> Very so I miss the Mr. Eugene uh, session. Uh, Boleh tengok semula nanti. Awesome. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Thanks for joining us, ma'am. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. More to share, more to give. We got so more many experts give. here. Yeah, more to give. Stay tuned. Yeah. The best part is, uh, we are all Malaysian trainers. <laughs> Malaysia <laughs> local. <laughs> Very, no very, also, very, so many tip and trick we learn <laughs> about the SL. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. That's great. That's great. So, 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 so ni, dari mana? Uh, I'm from Ampang. Oh, Ampang. Alhamdulillah, dekat je. Ampang. Lepas tu boleh upgrade, eh? boleh upgrade Excel data, boleh hmm, improvise okay. your current works, right? It's free flow. It's free flow of information. You're getting so many things in a day trading with many, many trainers here, many experts here, okay? I hope this is going to be very useful, not only for Puan Ashran, but the rest of you. Free training, but uh, I see uh, not many people want to uh, join this uh, very good, uh, very awesome this kind of well. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Puan Ashran. Seriously, really engage, really happy to to hear your your. your Thank you. Thank you so much. Kipu <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for the knowledge, for the experience. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Hi, Doctor Gobi. Hello, hello Hi. everyone. Sorry, tadi I joined through phone and then mic tak boleh pakai. Then I have to log in from phone, uh, laptop again. Ya, uh, Dr. Gobi, jangan petang nanti rosak mikrofon. <laughs> <laughs> Itu in Dr. Dr. Gobi bendera jangan lupa. Yes, Dr. Gobi pergi session buka apa? Pukul 1.30. 1.30 sampai 2.30. Wow. Yes. So, uh, guys, by the way, uh, for those who have just joined us, uh, nanti kita akan ada break setiap tengah hari for 30 minutes. 
yeah, uh, from 1 to 1.30. One yeah, so you can you can relax a little bit because we don't want to drag you the whole eight hours, kan? Nanti stress pula, eh? I uh -huh. know. Eight hours was training, a lot. The break, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, satu jam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's why I say. <laughs> ah. So I have to stop these people, the trainers, because they are non-stop. They are they are willing to go all the way. So I need, I need I think you need a rest as well. Uh, so kita akan ada relax sikit, kita ada akan ada lunch break about 1 to 1:30 before we continue with Dr. Gobi. Uh, so dia tunjuk muka dia sekarang dulu. Uh. Macam hero tamer kan. Uh. <laughs> uh. So um Exactly. Uh, mm. So, like, like, um, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm also, you know, uh, feel very, very happy that uh, people are watching and and experiencing Excel the way we wanted it. We can, we might say this, uh, Malaysian punya version kan, but we have seen a lot. We have seen a lot, and I believe uh, most of our, I say all of my friends here. Sebenarnya dah international level lah. Oh, uh, tinggi sangat tu. Cuma belum belum discovered je, belum discovered je. They are there already. I believe so. Being with these people, the things that they are sharing, the magic they are sharing, I think they are way better from some of the videos that I've watched. Kan? Uh, <laughs> so, hopefully that that you can you know uh, expand whatever that you have learned. Uh, from this session to others, so that others can learn as well. Yeah. Uh, the magic of uh, Sifu Bina, Sifu Kelvin, kan? Sifu Eugene. Oh. See, a lot more coming. Lepas ni ada Sifu I'm so excited yeah. to see more uh, the evening session, right? The, the, the one after lunch, oh, right? The VBA, the power query. Wow, that those are all hot topics. Seriously, guys, you got to attend attend those session. You know, see mind Bina. mind blowing session. Jangan Bina. lepas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Topik paling gila buat chat pakai VBA. Wow, kau ah. chat pakai. VBA. Ah. Ah. I kena ah. masuk. Ah. I also don't know why is that lah. Have you heard of that? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. VBA. So, Seriously. Memang, memang yeah, yeah. apa dia punya tajuk tu? Mesti, mesti stay to see ya. <laughs> Okay, Bukan saja uh, gempal lah Kelvin, ada tempat akut kan? Chef recommend one, ah, like that, chef ah, recommend. So, exactly, so Ken is here and Ken punya session pukul berapa Ken? Ah, that's a good question. Yes. Let me see here, this is my... Oh. <laughs> tak nampak. <laughs> okay. Ken punya session pukul... Uh, dia lepas siapa? Tiga setengah, tiga setengah. Dia lupa dia punya session. Ada, ada. Ayu ni Kelvin. Tengok, tengok sini, apa? Tak nampak. Tiga setengah selepas. I have right out there. <laughs> ah, ada, ada. Tengok. Ah, ada. Ada timeline punya. Oh, timeline. Ada ah. timeline punya. <laughs> apa yang saya nak buat, saya sudah tunjuk. Ah, sebab apa, apa bila saya buat training, kan saya pun ada timeline. Malah tahu saya, eh, tiba-tiba saya lupa. Ah, cakap apa. Eh, tengok saya buat timeline. Okay, okay, okay. Saya tahu apa itu. Hmm. Mesti plan lah kan Semua semua World class trainers Ini pun plan punya kan? Tak akan Tak akan apa uh, Biar kamu punya Kamu punya itu Excel That design So beautiful And so relevant To this month Merdeka 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 <laughs> Merdeka <laughs> Ken Ken Hari ini nampak handsome Ken Ah Ah. Terima kasih. Eh. <laughs> Blushing dah dia. Uh, merah dah pipi dia. Uh, you, you jangan tertipu, Ken. Ken, you jangan tertipu. So, Haila dia tak pakai spek lagi. <laughs> <laughs> eh, tapi nampak. Oh, cari spek, <laughs> cari spek cepat. Uh, kalau dia tak pakai spek, Ken, dia akan nampak semua orang handsome, Ken. Uh, bukan rasa I'm cute. I'm <laughs> cute. Okay, cute. <laughs> Oh, oh, so, uh, lepas ni uh, uh, Brother lepas Malik is here so Haila, kan? Yeah, yeah, huh? saya, saya. Uh -huh, Brother Malik ah. is here so, Brother Malik is here oh, Assalamualaikum salam. So Sifu Suhaila Teacher Su yeah. Also known yeah, yeah, yeah. as Teacher Su So what will you be sharing Lepas ni 
Uh, InsyaAllah saya akan share uh, format versus condition. Uh, that is conditional formatting uh. lah. Ah, uh, Okay. Setengah uh, orang ingat uh, macam format. Kita dah format. masuk next level dah eh. Uh, uh, itulah sebab kadang-kadang orang ingat format-format je kan. Uh, so kita go uh, hmm. satu level sikit atas. Ah, uh, Okay. Macam tu je. Betul. See most of the things that we are sharing here uh, viewers. And you can't really find this in books. The only way for you to 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 uh, see all this is by meeting the trainers. Okay, but you have to join and watch us. Uh, ask your question, yeah. right? Ask your question. Mm. Now, uh, uh, our our coaching fee per hour uh, is hundred ringgit per hour. But now, uh, you ask, uh, uh, no 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 charge, no charge. Uh, uh, no collectively, charge. Uh, 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 ten trainer charge. times one hundred. Thousand, uh. thousand ringgit an hour, an hour uh. Uh -uh. Solve your, solve your uh, many many hours of a uh, headache. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Gan, gan, yeah. Today mm. F O C for everybody. Exactly. All uh. these are free. So take the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, keep on sharing. Keep on spreading the the carnival. Uh, because it's only happening today, kan? Uh, watching it again, uh, you might not have the same feel lah, kan? Feel dia takkan sama. Uh, so, jangan buang-buang uh, peluang ni. Watching you again cannot answer your question. <laughs> our, our thousand ringgit <laughs> coaching hour uh, cannot, cannot use already. <laughs> only this time. <laughs> only this time. <laughs> Aduh. Oh, so, today. Hi, mana Eugene? Eugene. Ah, Eugene mana Eugene? Ada tu. Wah, I think we have another five minutes. Kita call upon Eugene sebelum kita start balik. Ada Eugene? Bro Malik ada? Bro Malik tadi nampak macam ada available tadi kan? Ada, ada. Ada di sini. Ah, switch ada. on your video bro. Dah, dah, dah. Sudah, sudah. Aku dah, tahu tapi aku tak nampak. Gelap. Yelah, aku gelap. Aku? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh gosh. Sedih aku. Selalu kau tak nampak aku. Sedih kan? Ah betul lah bro. Tak apa ada cahaya tu, keimanan. Tak apa. Masalah Tapi dekat lah. masalahnya cahaya keimanan tu kat sebelah je. <laughs> <laughs> so bro what what was your time untuk hari ni bro? Ah uh, main at uh, 2:30. 2:30 you eh? Ah uh, after the after the gobi ah. You go. Yeah. Bukan after Peter. After ah uh, ya yeah. but Peter ah, uh, after Peter ada tu in the gobi. Yeah. Oh okay okay alright. Hmm. So basically, so all, uh, already, yeah, insyaallah. So you guys will learn about the data constellation, and then after that, I'll show you about using the QR code eh, to integrate hmm. in Excel, and then uh, I can wow. link to the wow. file. Wow, QR code, yeah. nah. Hmm. Once Bro, that, nak tanya. Hmm. Uh, sebelum sebelum I pass the mic to Suhaila, nak hmm. tanya. Uh, you dah insaf ke bro? Sebab tengok dekat video tu pakai jaket you know, dengan dengan pakai sheets lagi ni nama macam dah insaf lah ni. Jadi baik sekejap lah. Ni <laughs> <laughs> free je bang. Free je belum ha. belum dua setengah lagi. Alik terbakar, terbakar, terbakar. Dia, dia dah dua setengah kan bila matahari dah tegak kat tu lah. Nanti memang terbakar. I, I, <laughs> nanti you, you, you have to introduce the... Uh, You punya apa tu video director lah kan untuk create video untuk kita orang buat lepas ni eh. <laughs> anak aku eh video director oh, yeah, eh? anak aku ah. Oh, Tolong. Awesome. Tolong. <laughs> Aduh. Bapak dia pandai okay. inherit lah. Bapak dia kan terror. Oh, ah. Ada lah mana ada. Ah, hai Siti, assalamualaikum. Ah, Siti pun dah lupa amir. Hmm, alhamdulillah. So Siti pukul berapa Siti? Anit Siti. Anu. You jangan jadi Kelvin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi. Uh, hi. 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 Siti pukul berapa? Siti punya session. 12. 12. Oh, 12. Ah, oh, right. dah dekat ni. tu. Lepas ah, ni, SS. lepas ni. Oh, well, okay, okay. I think hmm, it's about time, right? So, yep, yep, yep. Hello. So, 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 let's Are you ready? Eugene is here. Eugene so, is here. Eugene is going to show us the magic. 
Wow. Alright. So, okay. So, kita rasanya kita dah dah dah, dah ready dah ni, kan? Kita dah fuel up, kan? Untuk pergi uh, sambungan kepada Trainers Virtual Carnival Volume 2. Excel Madness Day, everybody! Yay! Yeah. All the best. Good luck, Soila. Thank you very much. All the best, Soila. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody. We are watching you. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> That sounds <nervous>. creepy. Inshallah, <laughs> inshallah, you can. You can. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All, all to you. Um, Bye. Thank you very much. Okay, let me share screen first. Okay. okay. Can you all see my screen? Alhamdulillah. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Very, very good morning everybody. Okay, my name is Suhaila Muhammad. All the way uh, broadcasting to you today uh, in FB, Sifu, uh, Sifu Time, uh, in Trunganu. Okay, <laughs> I'm residing in uh, Trunganu and today I'm going to present to you a uh, format versus condition. In other, uh, in other, uh, in other word, we, uh, we say... Um, for me, formatting, format, con conditional formatting lah. Terbalik dah cakap, Ya Allah. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, okay. I believe uh, everybody know what is conditional formatting. Yang biasa kita gunakan adalah yang default which is you just highlight the numbers that are greater than or the numbers that are uh, lower than the top 10 items, the bottom 10 items and so on so forth. Okay, so today kita move on. We move on a little bit just to enhance our capability of conditional formatting. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few of what uh, form, uh, conditional formatting can do. Okay, first I'm going to show you a shade alternate like this one. Okay, say hi to my screen bin. Okay, uh, so this is shade alternate. That means how you can produce uh, alternate shading, okay, towards your data set. Okay, later I'm going to show you how. The second thing that I'm going to show to you is the heat map. Okay, let's say you have data. Okay, this one is uh, actually an um, uh, example temperature at New York. Okay, uh, suddenly going to New York because tak boleh berjalan kan. So, you just virtually go to New York. Okay, and have some uh, temperatures level here. And you can see from the level here, uh, we mark up, uh, we do a heat map uh, using conditional formatting. Okay, so this is the heat map. Alright, and then we're going to do compare two list. Okay, what is comparing two list is that Whenever you have two lists, you want to see which in which list, either one of these lists does not have that particular data in. So, you're going to highlight in that particular list, whichever one that does not in the list. Okay, so that is comparing two data. And we can do this type of uh, form uh, format, uh, conditional formatting too, which is called auto color status. That means if you click uh, inside the drop down, Okay, you have the active and inactive. For example, once you key in the active, automatically it will color for you the with green color. If you click on inactive, it will color for you the red color. Okay, that will be your auto color status. And last but not least is the triplicates. Uh, okay, normally we do duplicates. We do remove duplicates. Uh, but today I'm going to show you, share, you, share with you. Okay, how to um, how to mark out on your screen the triplicates on your data. Okay, that means if let's say you have triple triple data, like alpha, alpha, and alpha, it will it will help you mark out on your data set all the triplicates using conditional formatting. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so that is the summary of what I'm going to do. Okay, so let me just show you the first one, which is shade alternate. Okay, normally, you have your data like this. And I know just now, um, Miss, B, uh, Miss B has already shown you how to create that uh, Excel, excellent Excel or smart table. Okay, and then you can do that uh, banded rows. Okay, now, uh, if let's say you're using the later version, you can use conditional formatting to create the alternate rows or the banded rows okay so this is how you do it okay uh, first of all if this is your data set okay you need to highlight the whole entire data set for example like this okay i'm going to uh, i'm uh, i'm going to hit on control and shift 
arrow to the right and arrow to uh, towards down okay downward arrow so that it will highlight the whole entire data okay and then i'm going to hit on home okay home tab and then go to your styles <clears throat> Kejap, man. let me pull out my uh, what you call this uh, zoom zoom button this one okay go to your home conditional formatting okay <clears throat> and then you go to uh, a new rule or manage rules okay this time around we are going to use all the rules kind of thing okay all conditionals using rules uh, tak ada yang guna atas bawah punya okay because this one i believe you know how to to, uh, to go about this one you nak letak i concept ke apa ke this one you know already right so i'm going to go all about the rules okay now i'm going to go to manage rules or you can hit on new rule okay so i'm going to go i'm going to new rule lah okay so click on new rule you will have this type of uh, dialog dialog box window okay so what are you going to do is that from here you have to select a rule type okay now when you select the rule type click on the last part use a formula to determine which cells to format okay from here you need to enter the <coughs> the formula ah suara pun dah tak keluar dah okay <laughs> sekejap eh okay so what is the formula that we are going to use we are going to use the mod formula okay mod formula is for you to uh, to determine uh, from the data set whichever row that we want okay so we're going to enter mod okay can you see it <coughs> let me take a uh, capital letters okay mod and then when you enter mod what eh? okay you need to specify which arrow that you want to be to be alternate shades okay so i'm going to put here row open and close bracket open and close bracket and then i'm going to hit on comma and put number two okay why number two because we want to have alternate gun so one two three again okay <clears throat> so it will highlight for you everything that is number two okay after two after two after two now you can change that by any numbers you nak tiga you nak empat you nak lima go ahead but you will see the difference in the coloring okay so that one that one is up to you okay so i'm going to hit on uh, close bracket and go on formatting okay so i'm going to click on format uh, now format you can format the numbers you can format the font the borders and the fill okay but when you want to use banded rows i believe you have to hit on the fill because kita akan dapat the alternate shades nanti all right so pick on a color so let's say i put a color this color okay uh, this purplish color <clears throat> and then i'm going to hit on uh, sekejap okay i'm gonna hit on okay here ah let me just pull this one down okay click on okay all right now as i hit on okay later okay you will see that alternate shadows will be alternate shades will be on this data set there you go ah can you see that ah so if you're using that lower version you still need that uh, banded rows okay by all means go ahead and do with conditional formatting yes you can do that Ah, uh, but if let's say you already have that higher version, the kayangan version, go ahead do the Excel table. Not a problem anymore because it will automatically bend the rows for you. Okay, all right. Okay, is that clear? Okay, I hope it helps you. All right. Now the second one for conditional formatting is the heat map. Okay, heat map. Okay. Now average monthly temperature sometimes can be kept like for instance this one. We are going to do. Uh, some sort of like analyzation for the data okay we are going to have this heat map okay practically it starts with this okay <clears throat> okay i'm going to click on this one practically this is the data that you're going to see okay is that nampak tak i'm just going to make it bigger all right so this is the data so what i'm going to do is that we are going to transform this into this because we want to show when we do presentation visualizing okay visualizing the data you want to see which uh, which year and what month okay you have the heat the highest the highest heat 
Uh, okay, so from here you know, oh, we have the cooler part which is the green color, and then we have slight, slight, slight hot with the yellow color, and we have the hottest part with the red color, and it goes smooth down back. Okay, of course, in December you have the winter, right? So we have that green color, the coolness. Uh, so this is what we're going to highlight. For, for our case in Malaysia, you can do like a raining, okay? Uh, you have the taburan hujan. Kesejukan dan ketidaksejukan, uh, all those kind of thing. Okay, from you need to have the idea on what to analyze first. Ah, uh, then only I've always specified that. We, whenever you have the data, you need to anal, you need to have an idea on what to analyze. Then only you can work on on whatever um, uh, features that you want to use or functions that you want to use. Okay, so so for instance, this one. Okay, let's. Let's do this one, yeah. Okay, so what I what you need to do from here is that very simple, tak susah. Okay, first of all, you need just to highlight the whole entire data without the header. Okay, so like this, I'm not going to use any uh, Excel tables. Ah, minta maaf ya, bis. Saya tak guna yang ni. So I'm come to the dependent one, <laughs> the back to the old school stuff. <laughs> old school type uh, but this is some time some kind of things that you can do okay, uh, okay all right so i'm going to highlight the whole entire data set okay and then go to my uh, home okay go to the home tab okay and then at home tab click on the conditional formatting can you see okay wait let me just hit this one okay what i need to do first is that i need to apply these color scales because why? Only with color scales, we can have that color sort of thing. So that we can have that heat, kind of heat map lah. Uh, okay. So you can choose, if let's say you choose this one, then it will be good. But uh, we are in the middle of like this. Okay. The red, yellow and green. So you need to choose whether you need to use green, yellow or red. Or red, yellow and green. Uh, according to the, the places or according to the data that you have. So let's see if you have like sales data uh, where in the beginning you have like very slow, very mellow down. Okay, then it will hype up and then it will go on and go on. So may, probably you want to change the color from the red through the yellow and through the, the green. Uh, so green means uh, everything will be uh, cherished and everything will be very, very good. Okay, for instance, uh, I'm, going, I'm just giving an idea for you. Okay, so let's put on the red, yellow, and green heat map, uh, color scale here. So you have like this. Okay, now once you have like this, what are we going to do next? Okay, if you want to know, let's say for instance, if you want to know what this color means, you can always go back to, to, the, uh, to the manage rules. Okay, manage rules. And from here, you can see graded color scale. Okay, and at edit uh, and at graded color skill, click on edit rule. Okay, now at edit rule, you will see the lowest, the midpoint, and the highest value. Of course, you can change according to whatever you need. Okay, this will be the highest value. This will be the percentile. If you need to change to number, you can just change it. I'm using percentile. Uh, percentage for 50 percent okay 50 percent i will get that okay and then uh, the lowest value of course the lowest value will be the green color all right so the highest value will be the, uh, the red color okay that is for the three color scale okay so uh, let me just close this okay now okay now how do i get rid of these numbers because we want to have okay we want to have like this Okay, we don't want people to see the numbers. We want people to see the colors so that they know, okay, with colors, it will boost up your brain, okay? Uh, with colors, you know what it meant by the numbers, or by the colors, okay? Like green just now is the lowest, and then you have the yellow, you have the highest number, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, to get rid of the numbers, okay, what you do is that you go to your general. Uh, this one, Eugene has touched this one in the, in the morning, formatting the numbers ah okay i'm adding to it ah thank you eugene i learned a lot just now okay now hit on this small button here okay or you can go at general and then click on more formats numbers either way will work okay okay i'm just gonna hit on that particular small button here we call it launcher 
Okay, and then go to the custom. Okay, go to custom. Add general here. Okay, what you need to do is that you just highlight it so that we can erase it and then type semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. Three times semicolon. Voila, click on OK. Ah, click, 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 click. Click OK. There you go. Ha, itu triknya. Okay. So, if let's say you have blank rows kan. Ah, macam sifu saiful tunjuk tadi kan. Ah, you can always remove that blank punya <laughs> perkataan tu by using that semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. Ah, sak tambah sikit eh saiful. <laughs> okay. So, I'm touching lah everybody's punya <laughs> Punya session tadi. Uh, okay. Uh, so, if let's say you want that, you type semicolon three times and then click on OK at number format. So, what you're going to have is that uh, you can uh, you can have uh, all the numbers disappear. Okay. And then, baru kita dapat the heat map like this. Simple kan? It's very simple but yet, you need to know what you're going to do first. Ah, uh, Okay. Alright. Okay. Now, next one. Okay. Compare. See here? Okay, I have two lists. As I mentioned just now, I have list number one and list number two. Whatever I don't have in list number two, I want a conditional formatting to highlight it for me. Same goes to uh, the list number two. Whatever I don't have in number one, I want conditional format to highlight it for me. So, let's say you have like very big database. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, one more thing. You can also have this in pivot table, the conditional formatting. Okay, but uh, look at the table first, how it goes, all right? Okay, uh, if you're in your data set, okay, you want to compare between the, the two lists that you have. Okay, instead of create, instead of going through the analyzation part uh, apa, uh, before, you, before you do the analyzation part, uh, why not you take a minute to do like this kind of thing so that you know, okay, this this uh, this data you have uh, some data that is in that is not in the second data or vice versa. Okay, you can do like this. Okay, now how do we do this? Okay, jump. Let me go here. Compare two lists. I st I have the same list. First, what you need to do is that you need to create a name range. Ah, uh, this one. Uh, Kevin has showed you and also um. Apa? B dah, T dah tunjukkan juga, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is that name range, okay? Mm, highlight the whole entire thing, okay? Uh, not control T, yeah? uh, but here at the formula, at the name box here, okay? I'm just going to put a name here. So let's say I'm going to give this list 1, okay? Right after I enter the last character, uh, while the cursor must say gedik gedik there, okay, you just press enter. Enter. Ah, uh, okay. So, you have like this. Okay, so you have all this as, as the name is list number one. Do the same thing for the next data. Okay, I'm going to highlight the whole entire this data. Okay, and I'm going to give the name here list two. Enter. There you go. So, kat mana nak tengok benda ni? Where do I see this? Okay, where do I see whether my name, uh, whether the name has already been given or not? One, you can highlight. Okay, you can highlight and look at the name box here. You have that list one. Okay, same goes to here. When you highlight, only when you highlight, you can see the name. If you click one of the cell, you won't be able to see the name. Okay, secondly, you can go to the, uh, okay, mak dah lupa. Alright, dekat sini. <laughs> the card formulas. Okay, go to the name manager. Okay, there you see list number one and list number two. Can you all see it? Ah, tu dia, I terangkan sikit. Eh? Okay, list number one and list number two. Okay, the first list and the second list too is the example tadi. Eh? My example tadi. Okay, alright. Now, Okay, there you go. You dah tahu dekat mana nak simpan kan? Di mana dia storage dia. Okay, now what you do is that. Okay. Firstly, kita nak tengok yang list A ni. Whatever that does not have in the B side. Okay, the uh, the second list. Okay, I'm going to highlight uh, second list. Okay, highlight second list. Okay, but you're going to see the first list punya apa yang tak ada. Alright, so we're going to go to home. Home tab. Bukan balik rumah. Home tab. Okay. And then go to the stars group. Conditional formatting again. Okay. And then hit on new rule. 
Haa, new rule. Wah, nak ambil apa ni? Tak tahu ni. Haa, okay. Alright. Okay, then what you do is that you go to the formula side. Haa, formula side. Okay. So, this is what you do, okay? You type here, equal count if, open bracket, okay? Open bracket kan? Okay, and then you take on a uh, list one. Remember, just now we give the first one is list one and the second one is list two. Ah, so click. So just type in list one. You need to remember because uh, uh, yeah, you need to remember because it's only two, right? So you just remember. Give a simple name that you can remember. Okay, and then I'm going to hit on comma. Okay, and what do I do next? Is that I'm going to hit on a one di kat sini. Why a one? Because always put your formula and whatever you are referring. Always refer to the first upper left data. Okay, that's the conditional formatting punya uh, punya pantang larang. Uh, not pantang, syarat. Ha, okay, punya syarat. Ha, because you need to put that, I always must put at upper left. Because whenever you put at upper left, okay, and remove all these references, remove these absolute references, nanti when you hit on enter, it will copy to the other punya uh, cells. So, the next one will be list 1, A2, list 1, A3, you do automatically Excel will do it. Uh, because when you give count if, okay, you are asking Excel, Mr. Excel, can you do count if for me for this particular list and then the, the A1 uh, is the data that we want. Uh, so, nanti dia, dia pun faham. Okay, dia kata, okay, I will find for you and I will mark it for you uh, with the formatting that you have already given. Okay. And then you tutup kurungan, okay, and then you press E0. Okay, that means that one we tak ada lah. Okay, the one that you don't have. Alright, now we go on formatting here. Okay, let's just choose one color. I hit on this color. Now, cari yang terang punya color. Orange, ya? Uh, orange. Okay, and then I click on OK. Alamak. Why this thing keeps on? Uh, okay, ni atas sikit. Uh, click on OK. Alright, once I hit OK. Okay. Eh, hey, mana dia? Oh, nampak tak dia duduk dekat bawah sini? Ah, okay. Nampak tak? Ah, okay. Can you see that? Ah, okay. So, this two is not in the list of this one. Ah, okay. Ah, that will be your comparing of the two list. Okay. So, do the same thing to the next one. So, that dia boleh dapat benda yang sama. Okay. Alright, okay. I leave the second one to you so that you can practice, okay? Alright, so now, auto color. The next one, ah. Okay, auto color. Ha, dah 11.45 dah, terkejut mak. Okay, uh, this is auto color. As I mentioned, when you hit on this auto color, uh, when you hit on the item, active or inactive, okay, automatically it will give color for you. Okay, so how do we go about it is that, first, what you need to do is that you need to do... Uh, this one. Okay, wait. You need to do, sekejap eh. Hmm. What we call data validation. The drop down list. Okay, data uh, validation. Validation. Okay, just do a simple data validation list so that you have the list at each and every one of this da uh, data. Okay, so uh, Kevin has shown you, you all how to do this just now, right? Okay, so I'm going to highlight whole entire data. Okay, go to the data tab. Okay, go to the data validation. Okay, here I'm going to highlight, I'm going to choose uh, list. Okay, list. And what is my source? I click on this arrow and I'm going to highlight only these two. Active and inactive okay this one uh, i i tell you uh, when you do data validation list is it's a wonders okay it will help you in every single day that you uh, every single work that you do okay and click on okay there you have it okay now you have this you have this yeah when you click at the attendance click here okay no, so actually not attendance lah kan. Boleh lah attendance ke, status ke, whatever you want to put lah. Okay, so put here, if let's say you put active, okay, and this one is inactive. Uh, but there's no color. Alright, so now we let's apply the color. Alright, so we just highlight. Okay, jom kita highlight. Okay, highlight. 
and then go at home tab conditional formatting again all right this time around new rule one more time okay okay now this one you need to click here format cells format only cells that contains okay that contains so what does it contain okay specific text containing what okay active you have to type in active all right and then format okay what color you need okay let's say kita ambil hijau eh ah uh, so we take that this green color okay and then click on okay and i click on okay all right now you don't see it yet okay we do the second one condition new rule okay only cells that contain specific text containing inactive with what color click on the format uh, and red color red color okay and click on okay okay one more time all right now what does it do when you click here active it gives you color green when you click here inactive it gives you the color red so by all the time all the time when you enter any kind of data ah uh, macam ni lah dia akan tolong buat uh, so if let's say you have like uh, sales okay you can put at the formula there okay uh, number more than number kan specific number more than 50 what color uh, so when you put in the when you key in your sales data if let's say more than 1000 hit more thousand 1000 quantity it's going to be red color or more than uh, more than 1000 quantity it will hit the yellow color just by all means put there the color so automatically key in the data you have that particular uh, color okay so that is auto color ah, okay boleh ka Okay, nanti you akan dapat benda ni. You can watch this one one more time dalam FBC full time. Okay? Alright, now. Okay, I'm going to show you the next one. This is the last one. Ah, dah 11.50 dah pun. Aduh, hai. Ha, mak cakap-cakap-cakap-cakap kan? Banyak sangat cakap. Okay. <laughs> okay. Triplicates. And how do you pronounce it? Duplicate? Triplicate? Ah, ikutlah klik-klik pun tak apa. Ah, does not matter. Okay, this is trip triplicate berbelit lidah nak sebut <laughs> ok alright now let's do this lah macam mana buat triplicates ni ah, ok so triplicates ni this is how you do it ok yeah. uh, sama ok first what you need to do is that kita akan highlight dulu the data ok we're going to highlight the data ok then go to conditional formatting there's nothing much you can uh, nothing much that you have to do is just to highlight and then just go to conditional formatting Again, we're going to take new rule. Okay, and then use a formula to determine which cells to format. Ah, kan? Ah, senang je. Ambil yang ni, masukkan je lah format, formula dekat sini. So, what formula we're going to use? We're going to use count, oops, 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 oops. Count if again. Ah, oops, sorry. Okay, count if. Tapi, what kind of count if? Just now, we have the list, right? It will count for you the list, right? Okay, so for this time, you are going to count the entire row. So, we need to highlight the whole entire row kat sini. Okay, now, uh, of course, it will uh, absolute, make it absolute references for you because the data does not move, okay? Do not ever move dia punya absolute references. If you move the absolute references, then your data will not be captured. Uh, with the conditional formatting okay remember that okay then um comma okay once you hit on comma now remember syarat tadi kan always click on the upper left data so i'm going to click on the upper left data remove dekat sini semua dia punya absolute references ah okay tutup kurungan okay Alright, now, if let's say you want to find triplicates kan, dia lebih daripada tiga. Ataupun sama dengan tiga. Okay, so you hit on equal sign, then put in three. Ah, okay, put in three. Okay, if you have more than three, now you can do like this. More than or equal three. Ah, macam tu. 
Okay, so I'm going to remove this. Okay, do some formatting. Okay, colour apa nak ni hari ni sekarang ni nak colour apa? Ah, uh, Nak tiru uh, Miss Bina lah. Okay, B suka warna uh, gold gold kuning macam ni. Ha, okay, kasih chan lah. <laughs> okay, and I click on okay. Nah, nampak tak? Ah, uh, So, automatically it will highlight for you nampak ni. Alpha, alpha, alpha. Kilo, kilo. Mana kilo? Kilo lagi. Ah Delta, Delta, Delta. Hi, ni Delta variant ni. <laughs> okay. If let's say ni apa-apa kan. Ah, so, I can. If let's say. I have. Let's see here. Wait. Ah, uh, uh, Let's see. I have lima. Wait. Ah, uh, Let me see. Okay. If I I have lima. And I change a few. A few uh, cells with lima also. What is going to do is that. Ni eh. Saya tukai. Daripada Zulu ni. Jadi lima. Lima. Dekat sini. Dia masih tak tukar lagi. So, saya ambil dekat sini pula. Okay. Lima. Enter. Automatic dia akan highlight. Once you, it's cap, it, dia dah capture the three times you, it happens in your data. Automatically, it will color it for you. So, do not worry about that. Ha. Okay. Alright. Just about time. Okay. So, um, I have already shared for you uh, the whole entire, not the whole entire lah. There's a lot more that uh, conditional formatting can do. Okay, if let's say you are using the lower version, uh, some, sometimes um, uh, 2003, this, uh, 2003, um, I think they can, oh no, 2003 cannot do, they, uh, cannot do that heat map. Okay, because this feature is not there. Okay, if you are using... If you want to use this, all these features, you must use 2013 and above. 2013, 2007 and above. Ah, sorry, sorry. Okay. Alright. So that you can use all these features. Alright. So, uh, last time when the first Microsoft Office launches in 1997, uh, conditional formatting can be done only tiga saja. Three types of conditions saja. Uh, three conditions that you can do for one particular data set. Only three. But now it's unlimited. You can all you can do and berapa banyak any any numbers that you like to do conditional formatting, go ahead and do it. Okay, search in the internet if you want. Okay, there's a whole lot of uh, tips and tricks on YouTube too. Okay, and of course we the Malaysian trainers, <laughs> we have the tricks too. Okay, all right, come forward. Okay, come forward. Sifu time is always there for you to um to uh, apa ni, uh, refer for uh, any um, any sharing uh, sharing of knowledge okay and then here again this is my number if you have any questions uh, okay or if you need any further classes uh, boleh contact saya insyaallah i will try and help you in any way i can okay because uh, sharing knowledge is something that we do as trainers and in sifu time uh, sharing knowledge uh, is um it's a good deed for us to do for you Malaysians. Okay. Uh, I nak panggil siapa ni? Aduh mak. Siapa ni selepas ni? Siapa-siapa? I stop Charlie Siti. first. Okay. Siti. Oh, Siti. Siti. Masuklah Siti. Oh. Hi. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Waalaikumsalam. Ya Allah. Wah kak. Bestnya. Masya Allah. Berkelip mata. Tak bersuk mata. <laughs> ha. So. Ha. Macam ha? dah tapau semua kan. Oh, dah, uh, ha, so, kan. From, from, from Sampai sasul-sasul dah mak. Ha. <laughs> oh, so, a bit here, a bit there is like consolidating uh, ha. some of the features from each one of the presenters. Alright. Yes, and including betul. myself as well. So, yes. We, uh, uh. You know, the, the audience are able to learn something new and they are able to see uh, when to use what. So, that is the most Correct. important part. So, I think your, your part is, is amazingly amazing because you can actually uh, drive us from the very basic conditional formatting into much more advanced uh, conditional formatting where you can actually um, you know, implement using uh, use formula. So, you can yes. actually ask Excel to check if the formula is true then hmm. please help me to put in the format. Yes, so that is betul. very, very interesting. Okay, <laughs> wow. Wow, great, great um, session, uh, okay. Kak Su. Eh, tak sabar ni nak tunggu Siti punya sharing tau tak? Ah, <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. So, uh, mine is, is, is going, to be, going to be like uh, enhancement because you have been showing us on how to use count if. 
So uh -huh. mine I'll be showing how you can actually have multiple condition and yeah. Excel can actually help you to show the result accordingly. So it's yeah. a bit here, a bit there. Okay, yeah. uh, you know some on uh, from uh, Kevin sharing, some from uh, I mean uh, Eugene, some from Shabina, and some from yourself as well. So it's yes. like combination. It's a combination. Cross, um, you know, yes. yeah. Some uh -huh. of the topic is going to be like uh, overlapping, but I will make sure that you are going to enhance your skill from that. Of okay. course, there's not only one, um, you know, like med my one method. So in, in our class, normally we will be sharing with the participant. Okay, yeah. you know, even though you just want to apply, um, let's say conditional formatting, you actually have different, different options how you are able to do it. And okay. in fact, sometimes without using conditional formatting also, you can actually um, do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course, it, it is actually depending on how, how you actually want to impress your boss, how you want to yes. impress everybody. Yes, and how you <laughs> and be want productive. To... Exactly, ah. exactly. So it's, it's about knowledge and yeah. this is what we're doing here today we want to share our experience yeah right. and hoping so that every one of you are going to uh, learn something and you are able to apply the magic and share with everyone around you and right. you will believe it that you know with just a simple clicks you know like few clicks <laughs> away you are able to save like you know maybe a few hours of your time and exactly. it's a, Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Kat, so amazing. thank you so okay. much. Amazing, you, amazing. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Over hi, hi, hi. Assalamualaikum. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, so hopefully everybody uh, able to, you know, like uh, be able to see yeah, the flow of Bully, our Bully. session. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, so my session uh, is, is going to be a combination. Okay. So as what I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a combination. Uh, I'm going to drive you through how you can actually use some of the useful Excel functions yeah, in order for you to be able to summarize your data. And of course, uh, by looking at the features, if you're talking about functions, there are a lot of functions in Excel. I would say more than 600 functions if you're using the latest version, all right, more than 600 functions. And some of the functions you can actually, um, you know, like use it in different, different uh uh, how to say uh, situation, yeah. But above all, whatever functions that you're going to apply, uh, it depends on your experience. So back to square one, experience, knowledge, count. All right. Okay. Um. So, uh, what are the topic or what are the activities that we will be doing uh, for for my session? All right. Uh, in terms of function, I'll be focusing on three uh, functions. Yeah. And they are coming from two different functions category. All right. For example, some each function belongs to uh, mathematical and uh, uh, mathematical and trigonometric function category. Uh, how you can actually have multiple conditions. All right. And then the other two function, average ifs and also count is belongs to statistical function category. So we're going to see how you can actually uh, create, um, you know, uh, these functions, all right, based on a given uh, criteria. And before we look into function, of course, we need to see how you can actually, um, you know, like uh, do uh, the data setting up, all right? Of course, you need to uh, design your report, okay? You need to design your report. So from the raw data, you are going to uh, transform into a report and for your report, okay, from your report, then only you are able to apply whatever magics that you want and already pick and choose some of the relevant activities and also some of the level, relevant tools that you can actually uh, apply and use yeah, in order for you to be able to minimize the time span, all right? And, and for this session, okay, already pick and choose uh, some of the useful tools. For example, we're going to look at how you are able to remove duplicate, even though you are not using, um, you know, like smart table, okay, or you use a manual table, not to worry, you can also use remove duplicate uh, features. All right, and on top of that, I'll be sharing with you on data validation as well. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, very, very um, straightforward setting, okay? And also define names, okay? How you can actually use different technique uh, because uh, some of the presenters earlier share few other methods. So I'm going to share with you some other techniques, how you can actually use define names. All right, and I have, um, you know, like um, two additional 
uh, bonus that I'm going to share with you later. So that's why I just put it over here uh, blank. Okay, uh, so let's see the surprise later. All right, okay. And let me share with you in terms of the outcome. So what are we going to achieve? Okay, what we are going to do? Um, basically, uh, the Excel chart already pre-created. Not to worry. Uh, at the end of the session today, uh, Mr. Sheng will share with us how you can actually create an Excel chart using VBA. <laughs> okay, so for this case, I already pre-created the chart because I don't want to focus on chart. There will be other presenters like Mr. Gobi also will be sharing with us on how you can actually develop um, chart. All right. Okay, so over here, I already set up uh, three different summary that I want to see. For example, like grand total, okay, average, and also number of record. And by looking at three different summary, okay, three different summary, and um, of course, if you are looking at static formula, what will happen is that it will only show you based on the current record selected, uh, means based on the current criteria that is being set. So that is static, that is static. So what I'm giving you is how you can actually have a dynamic uh, changes, all right? Or maybe you might want to be able to see real-time changes or interactivity. So this is actually good for live presentation, okay? So as mentioned, aside from using some of the other Excel tool that you know, you can actually use Excel function to build up a simple dashboard, believe me or not, all right? Okay, so let me change from, okay, one region to another region and you are able to see the data changes and the graph also will change automatically. So you can see live changes. Ah, so that is what, I am going to share with you. And this is the sample data. Okay, this is the sample data that we will be uh, using for this session. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the activities. All right. So I have it in another file. Okay, I have it in another file. All right. Okay, so in this file, definitely I don't have any setting. Ah, okay. And all right, starting with, okay, what are the tools that we will be exploring together? Okay, so let's see the data first. All right, let's see the data first. For example, if I show you the data set, all right, uh, so this is the data. And if you look at the total number of record, yeah, uh, total number of record is almost 10,000, okay, almost 10,000. So just imagine if you have too many data, how you can actually manage and organize your data. And you might want to be able to group the data, okay, easily, uh, group the data easily. Of course, yes, you can use a smart table, all right. But if let's say your data is very big, maybe you might want to look into any other alternative and you might want to be able to focus on certain um, result only. So you might not be looking at the whole database, you know. Uh, so for this example, we will be focusing on, let's say you might want to see total sales, total profit, total quantity by looking at different, different, um, let's say for this example, I already preset for different product, different region, and also for different salesmen. Okay, so to get started, okay, to get started in order for us to build up the drop down list, okay, we have to make sure that our product data, region data, salesman data, we cannot have duplicate, okay, we cannot have duplicate. And alternatively, what you can do is, okay, let me show you how you can actually uh, remove the duplicate, all right? So I will copy this column and I will put it away from the original data set, okay? All right, let me show you for product, yeah, let me show you for product. So once you have done that, you can select any cell within the data area. Okay, just select any cell within the data area. And where can you find the magic button? So let's look at the notes. Okay, let's look at the notes. So this is what we're going to do for the first activity. Yeah? We're going to remove duplicate for three column. All right, three column. It doesn't matter. You can start with any field first. All right, region, product, salesman, and where is the magic button? So every one of you, you can refer to data ribbon tab and then the group name is data tools and the icon name is remove duplicate. Okay, remove duplicate. So let's look at where can you find this button. Okay, let's see my sample over here. Let me go back to my data set. All right, you can actually select any cell. Okay, you can select any cell and then look at data ribbon tab. All right, let me show you the bubble. Okay, data ribbon tab data tools and here is the button okay it depends on the version that you are using okay it depends on the version that you are using for for my case i'm using excel 2019 so maybe uh, the button is a bit compressed all right okay so i'm going to click on this button and it will show me this dialog box called 
remove duplicates and what do I want to remove? Uh, what do I want to remove? I want to remove the duplicate data for products. So what Excel will do, Excel will check each data one by one. If there is a duplicate, it will just go and remove all for you. And for this case, you have to make sure that, that the spelling must be consistent. Uh, so you have to check on the spelling. All right. Okay, so I am going to select the default setting and I will just click OK and done. Wow, wow, wow. So what do you see over here? More than 9,000 records are duplicates and found and it will be automatically remove off yeah and only nine unit values <laughs> remain in the column so i'm going to click okay again and done and done and uh you need to do uh, the same thing for the other field uh so for my case i will just go and select region for example drag okay and let's say i will just uh, shift it to column and and i will just do the same thing okay so select any cell within the data area and do you still remember where is the position very good, very good. All right, look at data, ribbon tab, data tools group, and click on remove duplicate. So it is very important for you to remember where is the magic button. All right, okay. So I'm going to click OK uh, because I only refer to a single column. So not an issue over here. See, it will help you to remove duplicate. And as I already mentioned, make sure the spelling is consistent. All right. And I will be doing it the same way for salesman. Okay. And done. And done. Okay. So I already have three different field. Okay. Three different field. And all already being uh, removed. Okay. Uh, the duplicates. All right. The next thing that I need to do is when I want to use the drop down list, definitely, okay, when you fill in forms, for example, you want to be able to see the, the wording, okay, in alphabetical order, you want to be able to see the list in alphabetical order. So how can we actually group the data according to, uh, according to an ascending order, uh, an ascending order. So we will be looking at another feature in Excel called sorting. So how can you sort the data in ascending order? And we will be applying it to our um, source data. Yes, source data for our data validation later. All right, very simple, very easy. Of course, there are many, many ways how you are able to apply sorting. And for this example, I will be using the A to Z button. Okay, A to Z button. So where can you find this button? All right, you can look at data, ribbon tab. Okay, group name, sort and filter. And icon, I'm going to click on A to Z. Okay, A to Z. So let's come back to our data set. You can select any cell, all right? You can select any cell. Uh, you know what? Uh, some people, they will just go and highlight like that. Okay, so actually starting from version 2002, okay, I repeat, starting from version 2002, Excel already recognized the range of cells, range of cells. So meaning that when you press Control A, Excel know already how big is your data area. So not to worry, you don't even have to highlight your data. Just select any cell within the data area, and let me go to data ribbon tab. Okay, data ribbon tab. All right, group name, sort and filter. Okay, sort and filter. And look for this button called uh, sort A to Z, uh, A to Z. And it is actually recognizing your data according to the data type. So when you are working out with letters, okay, letters, then it will show you sort A to Z. Uh, okay, in ascending order. Uh, so if you're working out with numbers, then you will see largest to smallest and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to click on this button and done and done. It will arrange the data in alphabetical order. So I'm going to do the same thing for region. All right, so very easy. You just need to click on the A to Z button and do the same thing for salesman. All right, now I already have my data in the uh, right arrangement. Okay, right arrangement. Okay, so that is how you are able to group your data. And what are we supposed to do next? All right. Okay, next one is related to data validation. Okay, related to data validation. And we are going to set up the data validation. 
But first of all, okay, first of all, because my data is coming from a different spreadsheet and my dashboard also is on another spreadsheet. So to make things much more easier, okay, to make things much more easier, you can actually assign a name, okay? You can actually assign a name. And I'm going to share with you another method. How can you assign name? And of course, for assign name, there are few uh, terms used, okay? There are few terms used. Some is known as range name, range name, okay? And uh, for my case, I'll be using define name. Why I can use define name? Because the group name itself is known as the define names group, okay? Define names group, all right? Uh, so where can you find the setting? Uh, where can you find the setting? Again, you can look at your formulas ribbon tab. All right. So you can change the formulas ribbon tab. And then there's a group by the name of define names. Okay. See over here, define names and the button name. All right. Uh, for the first activity, I will be using define name. And then later on, I'm going to share with you magic. All right. Okay. So uh, let me come back to the sample data. All right, so come back to the simple data. So all you have to do is, all right, so for this case, I'm going to name three uh, defined names over here, yeah? So one is for the product list, the second one for the region list, and number three for salesman's leave, all right? So uh, for this case, I am going to select only the data, excluding the title, okay, excluding the label on top, all right? So just highlight the range, and you can click on define name button, Okay, click on define name button. And once you click on define name button, it will always pick up the first data on top if you are working out with text data. Okay, if you're working out with text data. And this is not the name that I want. So what I will do is I will just rename it to product. And remember, when you assign name, okay, rule number one, uh, rule number one, you cannot have spaces. Ah, you cannot have spaces. And rule number two, you have to make sure that the name must be unique. So that's why for this case, I am going to use product list. Uh, product list. Uh, and you will know why later. All right. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm able to see the name over here. Okay. All right. So I will do the same thing for region. Highlight, define names. All right. And I need to rename this to region. Okay. Region list. Remember. Rule number one, no spaces. Okay, rule number one, no spaces. So it is best for you to combine yeah, two words together. Or you can use underscore. Yeah, you can use underscore as well. All right, so this is salesman data. All right, salesman. So I'm going to name it as salesman list. All right. And just to do a quick, okay, a quick check. Okay, a quick check before I apply in my uh, data validation list. All right, so you can make your selection over here product list, all right, and then the second one is region list, and the third one is salesman's list. Okay, I already have all the settings that I need for my data validation. All right, so let's come back to my dashboard. Okay, so what am I going to do with this dashboard? All right, so I want to have a drop down list for region, product, and also salesman. So where can you find the magic button to create the data validation? All right, so let's look at the steps. Okay, let's look at the instruction first. So we are going to do, okay, three times over here. So uh, to find the magic button, you need to look at another ribbon tab. Okay, another ribbon tab. All right, let's look at data ribbon tab group name data tools and the icon name is data validation okay data validation is right below uh remove duplicate uh if okay if you are having the same setting uh, so it's going to be below remove duplicate all right okay so let me go back to dashboard and let's fill up yeah okay so i'm going to select uh and i'm going to do it for region first okay so you can make your selection from data ribbon tab data tools group data validation and the criteria that i am using over here is list so i'm going to select list and for source okay it's kind of difficult for you to you know like type by yourself so i am going to share with you another technique yeah. how can you actually fill in the name, uh, how can you fill in the name without typing? Aha, without typing. All right. Okay, ready everybody. So, can you look at formulas ribbon tab? Okay, same group, define names. And there is a button called use in formula. Use in formula. And all you have to do, you just need to pick up the name that you want. And for this example, I am referring to the region. So I'm going to select region list over here. 
And okay, all right. See, you don't even have to type. So try to look at all these options. Ah, see, I have my drop down list already for region. And I am going to do the same thing for product. All right. So where again? Where again? Can everyone help me on where? Where can you find the button? All right. Very good. <laughs> okay. Data ribbon tab, data tools group, data validation. Ah, so it's best for you to repeat many times. And it's best for me to repeat many times also to make sure that all of you are able to remember where is the location. All right. And I am referring to the product. So I'm going to select product list over here and click OK and done. I have my product drop down list and <laughs> I'm going to do it for the last uh, one last time for salesman. OK, so what I will do, same thing, category, I will select list and source. OK, source, I'll be using formulas, using formulas and I am going to select salesman's list and OK. So I have all the button that I need for my dashboard. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, wow. So the first part done already. Yay. <laughs> now let's look at the second part. Okay, let's look at the second part. The second part is actually function. So we are going to work out with three functions over here. Yeah, we're going to use some ifs. All right, some ifs and then average ifs and also count ifs. But first of all, when we are looking at the raw data, raw data, okay, because we are going to copy the formula. Uh, so we have to do it three times over here, three times over here. But I don't want it, I don't want to do three times. I don't have time for that. I only want to do it only once. I only want to do it only once. And I can directly copy the formula copy the formula. So for this case, we are going to set another name. Okay, we're going to set another name because when we copy the formula, we want to make sure that the data is referring to these three columns. Uh, it is actually referring to the three columns. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to share with you another magic, how you can actually assign multiple names uh, to a multiple selection, uh, multiple names to multiple selections. All right. Okay, so for this case, okay, I'm going to assign another name, okay, for our three column, all right, region, product, and salesman. And in order for you to be able to apply multiple names, so all you have to do, number one, you have to select the range that you want, uh, the range that you want. So if I go back to my data sheet, uh, data set over here, I will make the selection for column B until column D. So just highlight the entire range including the title ah yes 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 including the title so we are going to ask excel to pick up the title from the top row wow see how easy it is all right ready don't blink your eyes all right okay first of all let me share with you where can you find the magic button all right you can look at formulas ribbon tab okay again formulas ribbon tab group name define names group all right and there is one more button yes one more button that is available under this group that is known as create from selection means that depending on your selection. All right, let me come back to my data set already highlighted the range and don't think your eyes ready everybody go to formulas define names create from selection and over here because uh, I have the text data on the first row, so it will show top row, and I have another data on the left column over here. So it is actually detecting the label in column B, but I don't want to assign name based on column B, so I will just uncheck for this case. All right, and I only want to have a uh, label from the top row. All right, ready, ready, ready. One, two, and three. I'm going to click OK, and done. All right, definitely you won't see anything happen over here. So in order for you to be able to check, come back to the name box. All right, come back to the name box and I have the name already. Can you see over here? Product and then I have another one region and I have another one for salesman. So that is how you are able to look at how can you assign the name according to the title that you have in your data set. All right, so make sure when you assign name, name cannot have any duplication. Ah, name cannot have any 
duplication. Wow, let's see how can we build up the formula. Okay, how can we build up the formula? So when you are working out with this function, uh, it works in pairs. Okay, it works in pairs. So for some if and average if, the argument are the same. Okay, the argument are the same. The sum range or average range is referring to the summary. Ah, uh, summary. So what do you want to calculate? Okay, what do you want to calculate? And then for the other criteria, okay, for the other criteria, uh, you need to look at, okay, the range and also the criteria, okay, the range and also the criteria. So if you are referring to product, so where is the range coming from? Definitely from product range. And where is the criteria coming from? Also coming from product. So you just need to select one by one. And it doesn't matter which one start first. It doesn't matter which one start first. And you can have up to maximum 127 pairs for this example. Okay, uh, so let's see how can you build up this formula. All right, let's look at dashboard. And I am going to build up the formula for column C until column E together. Uh, I'm going to build up the formula together. So I'm going to select these three cells. All right, and... Uh, let me use function argument, okay? Let me use function argument so that you are able to see the construction of this formula, okay? The construction of this formula. All right, ready? Okay, so the first function I'm working out with sum ifs, okay? Sum ifs belongs to maths and trigonometric function category, okay? Mathematical and trigonometric function category. And all you have to do, you just need to scroll down and look for some ifs function with the S, with the S, because we are looking at multiple criteria, okay, multiple criteria. And all you have to look at is, you just need to fill in the information over here, yeah. And if you notice just now, I purposely didn't assign any names for the sales field, product field, uh, profit field, and also quantity. The reason being is that because we are going to copy formula and we want Excel to move from one reference to another reference, okay. From one reference to another reference. And for this case, what you have to do is, okay, for this example, let me share with you uh, one additional information to the settings, yeah? Uh, one additional information to the setting. Okay, I already have it over here. Okay, so for some range, okay, for some range, and also for criteria one, criteria two, okay, criteria two and criteria three, what we have to do is we have to change the reference type Okay, we have to change the reference type from relative references to absolute references. Okay, relative references to absolute references so that, okay, when you copy formula, uh, when you copy formula, it will refer to the same range. Uh, it will refer to the same range. Okay, so if you want it to be, uh, you know, you want it to change. Uh, you want it to change them, you can just leave it as relative. Uh, so for this example, Criteria 1, criteria 2, criteria 3, we have to convert it to an absolute reference. Okay, uh, absolute reference. And then for some range, average range, because we are referring to a different summary. Different summary. So we are going to leave it as relative. Ah, so that is the planning. That's why before you can build up your formula or calculation, you have to check first. You have to plan first. Are you going to copy the formula or not? If the answer is yes which direction that you are going to copy formula. All right, so let me do it over here. Okay, so let me open up the dialog box again. Mathematical and trigonometric function category and look for some is function. Okay, some is function and some range. I'm going to select the sum range from the data set. Yeah? And the first reference is coming from the sales column. So I will just press control. Okay, control shift down arrow. Control shift down arrow. And for this case, I don't have to uh, change it to an absolute reference. Yeah? So I will just leave it like that. Okay. So now for criteria range one, criteria range one, remember my magic button earlier? I don't have to type. I don't have to type. All right. So I will use, use in formulas. Okay. Use in formulas. You can make your selection over here. And it doesn't matter, as mentioned, you can start with any, any, um, how to say, any field first. Okay, let me follow the order on the report. I want to select region. Okay, so region, here you go. And what is the criteria for region? Uh, what is the criteria for region? It is depending on the selection that you make from the cell above. And, and for this case, I have to lock it. I have to put the dollar sign because I'm going to copy the formula from column C to column 
uh, column D, uh, okay, uh, sorry, column C to column D, column D to column E. So I have to make sure that the reference must have the dollar sign. And I will just continue with the other range. Okay, I will just continue with the other range. So the second one is product. So let me go and select product. And the reference also is coming from above. I will just press F4 over here. And to continue, uh, to continue, you can use the arrow key over here to scroll down, uh, to scroll down, okay? All right, so you just need to make your selection for the third uh, name, okay, salesman. And the data also is coming from above, see? is depending on the arrangement. And for this example, remember, I am selecting three cells together three cells together. Uh, Bina already shared with us the magic button. You cannot press enter. You cannot click OK. If not, only sales will have the summary. Do you still remember? What is the shortcut key that Bina shared with us earlier? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> OK, very good. Very good. Control and enter. Oops. OK, what happened over here? Am I making any mistakes? OK, hold on here. Yeah? Uh, so let me check. Let me check. OK. So I can click on the FX button. Okay, let me remove off the range over here. Okay, hold on, yeah. Ah, something happened. <laughs> okay, so let me move on. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, so I need to select my sales data again. Okay, control shift down. Should be okay, right? Region C14. Okay, all right. Product D14. Okay. Mm. Should be okay. All right, let me click okay. Yeah, let me click okay. There's a problem in this formula. Um, all right, never mind. <laughs> okay, never mind. If it doesn't work using a dialog box, hold on, hold on. I, I might my, I might select something, something uh okay, wrong over here. Let me type the formula. Some is okay, some range uh, coming from the data set. Okay, coming from the data set. All right, so sales. Control shift down, comma, okay. And then my uh, data, yeah? Okay, my data, I'm going to use the name. Okay, I'm going to use the name. Okay, hold on, hold on. All right, so let's say use in formula. Okay, uh, let me start with region. Okay, region, comma, and I need to come back to dashboard. Okay, come back to dashboard so that I can select the field name over here. And I need to put the dollar sign. All right, comma. And then the other range, let's say product. Okay, seems to be okay. All right, so product. And then this is the uh, selection. All right, and okay, hold on there, hold on there. All right, okay, so salesman, comma, and this is the data. Okay, so F4. All right, let me check. Okay, seems to be okay. All right, yeah, I have it already. Uh, maybe something wrong with my selection earlier. Ah, there you go. Ah, there you go. Okay. Ah, all right. Ah, panic attack, yeah? Okay, not to worry. And for average, it works the same way also. So what I will do is, because we are running short of time already, I will just copy everything over here. So let's say I will just copy. All right, because the input for average if is the same, yeah? Ah, input for average if is the same. So I will just... Uh, select the function average ifs and I will just paste the argument uh, because it works the same way for average ifs. Uh, the number of argument is the same. All right, and done. So I have it for average if. And the last one is for count if. Okay, so for count if, I just need to remove off the first argument. Okay, I just need to remove off the first argument because the this function, you don't have to put in the summary uh, because it will just tell, show you how many record match. Uh, how many record match. All right. Ta-da. Done. Okay, done. Finally. Okay. So, there you go. Yeah, there you go. You are able to see how you can actually create a dynamic uh, report. Yeah? Dynamic report by combining some of the Excel tools. Okay, some of the Excel tools as well as how you can actually combine with some of the Excel functions. So hopefully all of you are learning something and that's it for my session. Okay, that's it for my session. All right, okay. Thank you, thank you so much everybody. And let's welcome Mimi. Hi Mimi, Assalamualaikum. Hi Mimi. <laughs> Hi Mimi. All right, so Mimi will be sharing with us on Yes, what if you encounter problem like what I'm having just now? Suddenly I see pop-up message. So maybe Mimi can help me with that. 
Why? Why am I getting the error message? Okay. All right. Yes, Mimi. Okay. All right. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Kak Siti. Okay. Um, super presentation. Uh, she makes me uh, nervous and I need to take a deep breath actually. Uh, because uh, all of all of the trainers uh, from morning session, uh, they put a very high uh, benchmark uh, for other trainers. Okay, uh, especially for me, uh, I'm the last uh, presenter for the first slot today. Okay, uh, again, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to thank to all the followers and also uh, Seafood Times fan, uh, which is. Uh, you are willing to spend your uh, precious uh, weekends with family uh, to be with us uh, for the whole day uh, to learn about uh, Excel. Okay, it's uh, all about Excel for today. Uh, we have uh, trainers from the morning session. Okay, and then we have another, I think, uh, eight or uh, eight, uh, another eight topics uh, at the evening. Okay. So uh, just stay with me. I, I know uh, now is your lunch uh, lunch time. Okay, just give me another thirty minutes. Okay, before uh, we break for uh, lunch uh, session. Okay, so um, about my topic. Okay, let me share my screen first. Okay, before that, uh, I hope uh, everything is clear. Can you boleh dengar suara I? Okay, let me yes, share my yes. screen first. All right, thank you. Alright. Alright. Okay. So my topic for today is um, how to fix uh, ten types of error in Excel. Okay. I believe that uh, most of us have seen um, at least uh, six um, out of ten uh, of the errors, and uh, sometimes we take. Uh, a lot of time to figure out uh, the errors in Excel. Okay, so my job today is uh, to give a clear picture uh, about uh, Excel errors and how to fix uh, all these kind of errors. Okay, so, um, all right. So let's see for the first one. Okay, uh, basically, um, every uh, Excel, okay, Excel function comes with uh, their own terms and uh, condition. Okay, so if we break the terms and condition, so uh, or the function are avoided, then um, you will see all these uh, Excel errors. And every function has their own syntax. Okay, and we must apply all the syntax mm -hmm. properly. Uh, and then if any deviation is observed in entering the syntax, then there will be an error. Okay, all right. So understanding the Excel error are very important uh, uh, as soon as that we understand the function. Okay, so all this uh, error display um, and tell us a lot of things. So we need to understand and with a proper understanding of uh, Excel errors means we can easily solve uh, all these, uh, all those errors. All right, so let, let us see um, uh, a few sample, okay? So this is uh, a few sample that we usually see in Excel. Okay, the first one is about uh, values error. Okay, if you can see, okay, I believe we always see this kind of error. Okay, value uh, divided by zero, and then we have numbers, right? And uh, we have names errors, okay? And we have a reference errors. Okay, I just pick a, a few of uh, 10 errors. Okay, I just picked a few. Okay, actually, uh, I will be presenting 10 types of error, but uh, I will demo only for eight types of error uh, because of limitation of the version that I'm using. Okay, because I'm using Excel 2019. Okay, why I'm choosing another two errors to be included in my presentation? Uh, because this is for uh, Office 365. Okay, all right. So let's see um, our first example. Okay, our first example. Okay, the first one. Okay, if you can see, uh, I have a list of part numbers uh, starting from bearing, uh, gear, widget clock, and also bold. Okay, I have a list of price. Okay, and then 
Uh, for this example, I'm going to use the um, a VLOOKUP function because a not available function is um, error is usually uh, appear when we do a VLOOKUP. Okay. So actually, um, okay, let me type the, the sample first. All right. For the part number, let's see, I'm, I'm searching for price for gear. Okay. Let's say for gear, I will type gear here. And then I'm going to use the VLOOKUP okay, to search for the gear price. Okay, VLOOKUP. Okay, and then uh, our lookup value will be D3. Okay, comma. And then the next one will be the, uh, my table array. Okay, this is my table array. So, and then I will lock my table array. Then followed by column index number. Since we only have two columns here, uh, and then I'm searching for the price, means price is column number two. So I will put two, then followed, follow, uh, follow up by the range uh, lookup, which is uh, I'm going to search uh, the exact match for the price. Okay. And then I will, I will enter. Okay. So in this example, I can see when I do some um, searching, okay, let's say, um, Let's see, I put another things, another part, key bearing. Okay, I will get the answer, uh, price, 70 ringgit and 50 cent. And then one more, COG, or, sorry. Okay, let me delete this one, COG. Okay, all right. What happened if I try to search a part number that is not in the list or not in our table? Let's say I'm searching for nail, and then I will get these types of error, NA. NA means not available, all right? For this kind of uh, error, okay, what we can do actually, okay, I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to use the formula auditing uh, tools because uh, from my experience when I conducting uh, Excel classes, not a lot of people are using the formula auditing tools. Okay, let's see uh, uh, what Excel tried to tell us. For example, okay, we have um, the error checking notification, but most of the participants or users, they always ignore the error message here. Okay, we have a list of uh, info here. Okay, value is not available in error. Help on this error, show calculation step, ignore or edit in formula bar. Okay. All right, so whatever we have here, actually we can find the, the same uh, in our formula auditing group. Okay, let's say I'm using, okay, I try to use the evaluate formula. From here, okay, from here, let me zoom a bit. Okay, I have VLOOKUP. Okay, I have VLOOKUP. Okay, next is D3, D3 is nail. Okay, when I click evaluate, so from here I will see nail, then click another evaluate, I will get the evaluation, uh, not available errors. Okay, all right. So what is the solution of, um, what is the solution of this uh, kind of error? Okay, first you need to um, cross check uh, every or each column and cell that are, if the data is placed correctly or not. Okay, so in this example, okay, let's see. <clears throat> okay, we know that now uh, nail is not available in our data. So what can help us to um, solve this problem is by using the if error function. Okay, so we can put some um, uh, tags or notes uh, for the items that are not available in the table. So I'm going to add uh, if error function, okay, if error function. So from here, okay, this is all the value for the VLOOKUP. Okay, I will, okay, put a comma and what is the value if error? Let's say um, I put a not, not valid. Okay, then I will get an uh, message not valid. Okay, let me try something else. 
also not valid. Okay, boom. Okay, then I will get the answer. Okay, so usually for uh, for the not available uh, error, okay, uh, it happens uh, when you try to search something that is not exist in the table. Okay, right. Let's move to another one. Okay, error number two is value. Okay, for this example, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to show you the error for value and divide by zero. Okay, in this example, I have column for budget and then I have column for the actual. All right. So I'm going, I'm trying to find the uh, how many percent of income that I use uh, for the expenses. Okay. For your information, all the cell here, I have uh, been uh, formatted as a percentage uh, format. So that's mean I, I just can simply divide the amount in C11 divide by uh, C8, all right? So let me type the formula. Okay, C11 divide by C8, all right? To get the percent of income. And then I will enter. So for the first example, I already get the answer 25.6%, all right? So, uh, let's see what happened when I copy, okay, or double click, and then I will get these two kind of errors. Okay. The first one is value, and the second one is divide by zero. Okay, let, let us check um, what is um, the error message that uh, Excel tried to uh, inform us. Okay, the first one, the value used in the formula is in the wrong data type. Okay, actually this is the error message. Okay, how to find or how to check why this kind of problem appear. Okay, let's use our formula, formula auditing uh, group or tools. Okay, from here we have three precedents to find, okay, to check our error. So let me use the first one, three precedents. So this error show that indicates which cell that are affected, uh, the value of the currently selected cell. Okay, because I'm clicking on the uh, cell D12. Okay, let me check. Okay, the value here comes from, okay, cell C12. This is cell C12 and this one is cell, sorry, C9. This one is cell C12. So that's mean the formula we look like this, actual divide by what? Okay, the number can 200 something here. Okay, the number. So this is tax, this is number. Okay, so for the value, it happens when the value of the two cell uh, is not in the same format. Okay, if you can see the, the first one is actual is a tax and the second one is number. Okay, second one is number. So. Um, this is the first one, all right. Let us check the second one, divide by zero. Okay, I'm going to use the same method, okay, to check, okay, for the three precedents. Okay, divide by zero. From the error itself, actually, we can clearly uh, notice that um, why we get this kind of error, because we divide by, we divide by zero. Okay, divide by zero. Same, if you can see, see, this is a C13 and this is the number. We have a zero value here. Okay, we have zero value, blank, blank cell, All right? So, um, that's mean we have something wrong with our cell reference. Uh, it's supposed to be because we should refer to the same cell, which is cell C8. So, that's mean we need to lock this cell. So, I'm going to change my first formula here, okay, C8, I'm going to lock this one, okay, and then enter. So when I copy the formula or double click, it seems like when I check everything randomly, I, I randomly click, okay, all the cell here is referring to the same cell C8 because we already locked the cell, all right? So, so this is um, the sample uh, example of two types of, two types of error. So if you can see, 
<clears throat> so the solution for divide by zero and divide by, um, uh, sorry, uh, value error is by checking your checking your uh, formula. Is it you are the, you are using the same uh, format of data or not? And then another one is obviously because uh, divide by zero. So you need to change the formula. Okay. So next one. Okay. Next one is error name. Okay. Error name. Okay. Let me. Okay. For the first, uh, in our first example, for the not available, I'm using uh, VLOOKUP. Okay. I'm using VLOOKUP to, uh, to find the price for our product. Okay. Right. I'm going to use the same formula, VLOOKUP. Okay, in this example, okay, we look up and, and then my value followed by my table array. Okay, I can lock this one also, F4. And then my column index followed by this. All right. So in this example, we don't have any problem because I'm correctly uh, typing my formula. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I put S. Okay, V lookups. Okay, let's see. I put S. Okay, I add S. That means I'm wrongly typed the formula. Then you will get this kind of error, right? So it happened actually uh, if the case that the formula that you type, okay, you wrongly type the formula. So Excel cannot recognize the formula. Okay, all right, so this is the name. So solution for this one, simple, okay? You can use the evaluate formula also, okay, to check. You just click on the error message and then you click the evaluate formula to check, right? So now you can see VLOOKUPS, okay? VLOOKUPS, we got S here, there. And then click evaluate. From here, from here, you know that, okay, we get the error. That means something wrong with your formula. It's not your syntax behind. It's about your formula. So you need to change your formula. Okay, use the correct um, spelling. Okay, and then the correct syntax. So let me delete the S. Then you, you will get back uh, the correct answer. Okay, so that one is uh, error number one, two, three, error number four. Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, let's move to the next one is number error. Okay, number error. Okay, for the number error, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, in this example, I'm going to use a square root function, okay. For the example here, okay. And then I'm going to use the square root. Okay, the square root function is used to return the square root of the number. <clears throat> and the number is A3 as a reference. Okay, and then I will get the answer seven, means seven times seven is 49, right? <clears throat> seven times seven is 49. So, when I double click, okay, for the second one, I will get 12, means 12 times 12 is 144. But the third one, okay, 36, negative 36, I get the error num, okay, means something wrong with the, <coughs> with the number. <coughs> so for the num error in Excel, it, it occurs when the value, uh, 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 value in the formula is not valid. Okay, mostly it's shown the case where uh, we have a problem with number. In this example, it's because of 36 is a negative value. So when you, you adjust the, uh, the number input, so the calculation that you perform uh, can be performed and then the error will be disappear. Okay, so if you use the evaluate formula, Evaluate, so uh, you will get the 36, negative 36, and then evaluate, then this is the error. So just remove the, the solution for this one is, just remove the negative value, and then you will get 
you will get the answer. So basically, num error is about the value in the formula is not valid, not the formula, but the value. Okay, it's not valid. <clears throat> All right, next. The next one, I have another 10 minutes more. Okay, the next one will be reference. Okay, this is the common error that we get. Okay, in Excel. Okay, usually, uh, uh, reference error. Okay, reference error. Uh, display the formula reference in cell that is no longer exists in your table or in your data. Okay, let me type the formula first. Okay, let's say we have a unit sold a price. Okay, let me calculate the total price by multiply the C, sorry, B3, okay, to C3. And then I will get the answer 52.5. Then double click. All right. So in this, this uh, example, okay, we get all the answer correctly. Okay, what happened? If I accidentally delete my column C, okay, delete my column C, all right, then you will get this kind of error reference. That means in a reference error, uh, Excel cannot find the location of the formula, okay, location of the cell in the formula. So, the solution for this kind of problem, okay, this is if you use a trace precedent, okay, uh, you will see um, they are in the same line, but we are missing another one dot. Okay, we are missing another one dot means we are missing another one cell here. So the solution is if you accidentally delete the column, so you just need to undo lah, or, or what you need to do is you need to retype back manually okay so just type back the formula and put uh, content of the cell okay <clears throat> so in this example i will insert back okay the price okay let me copy this one okay change back okay your reference here which is c Okay, which is C3. So just put back the C3. Then you will get the answer back. Just double click. Done for this kind of problem. Okay, next one. Okay, the next one is none. Okay, uh, for this uh, kind of error is, uh, I can see that it's re uh, really, really uh, happen. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, in case of we use an invalid range delimiters, okay, in Excel, okay, right. Let me total up all the price here. Okay, usually, okay, usually people will simply click auto sum, right? Uh, senang kan, you nak just click the auto sum and then you will get the answer. Okay, but some people they love to type the formula. Okay, some people, they love to type the formula. So just assume that I love to type the formula manually. Okay, I know that I'm using the sum function, okay? And then I will refer to B3, okay? I will refer to cell B3, okay? And then I didn't, I forgot to put the colon. I'm just spacing and then I put the last row okay is c7 and then enter when i enter then i will get the null error okay so null error okay again is happen when um, we use an invalid range of delimiters okay <clears throat> all right so the solution is check back your formula the syntax which is I'm missing the colon. You just put the colon and then enter. Then I will get the answer correctly. Okay, so this is null function. This is only happen when you uh, type the formula manually. Okay, if you use uh, auto sum or you, you, 
or if you use the um, uh, function argument, let's say you use the function arg argument here, so it will be um, less opportunity to get an error lah, because you already follow the syntax. Okay, and then, okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, the next one, the next one is um, hashtag error. Okay, actually, this is uh, this is not a hashtag. Uh, sorry, this is not an error. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm usually in each session of my classes, when we do the calculation, I always get the question, um, one, okay, I get an error. What is your error? Hashtag one, uh, hashtag one or hashtag miss. Okay, actually, this is not, this is not an error. It's just because of uh, space, okay? The, 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 the content need more space, right? So let, let me uh, do the calculation first. Okay, let's say unit sold times uh, the price, and then I get the answer for the first one. Okay, actually, when I hover the mouse here, I can see the answer 511 ringgit and 50 cent. But people didn't notice this one. They nampak aja this one also daglaba. Okay, terus on the mic point, I get the error. Okay. So this is not an error actually. You just need to make the column more, okay, or just double click to get the perfect size of your content, okay. Then this is not an error actually. It's just about the space, okay. All right. So um, I'm done with eight demos, okay. Eight demos for a normal uh, office. A uh, version, okay, but uh, for the last two, okay, for the last two for speed and cal calculation, okay, I I can't do the demo from my version because this one is for uh, Excel three hundred and sixty five. But uh, I'm providing you with the screenshot, okay, for you to refer. Okay, let's go for the first one, spill. Okay. For this error, this kind of error, okay, for example, I have the uh, list of value, okay, purple, red, red, pink, black, blue, green. Okay, I try to look for a unique value uh, by using the formula unique. When I type the unique uh, formula, okay, so this formula is not uh, available in my version. Okay, I will get this kind of error. If you still remember, the name error is about what? Uh, the name error is about, okay? The formula that I type is not correct or is not exist in my version. So uh, I providing you with the uh, screenshot, okay? For the example, this is for Excel uh, 365. Okay, in, in this example, okay, we have the same, we have the same list of uh, value, the colors, and then we try to find a unique uh, list of colors okay, by using the formula unique. Okay. From here, when I try to extract okay, the unique colors, okay, and if you notice, we have uh, X, okay, we have X here. Okay, when you enter the formula, you will get a spill error okay because because of this x has been placed in between so the solution is simple you just need to delete the x and then run the formula again okay so this one again is only available for office 365 users okay so let's move it's already 1 pm okay let's move to the next one okay my last sample is calculation Okay, simple. Okay, simple example. I have a list of, I have a list of fruits. I have a list of fruits here. Okay, apple, pear, and uh, banana. Okay, quantity is, all these three quantity is more than 100 actually. Okay, so I will try to filter. Okay, let's say I will try to filter um, uh, based on, let's say, uh, apple or pear, or I want to find uh, something, okay, list of fruits that uh, the quantity is less than 100. 
So I'm using the filter function. Okay, filter. This is the example filter function from C3 until D5. So this is the range. Okay, C3 until D5. And then the value here is D5, D, sorry, D3 until D5, okay, which is more than one, uh, less than 100. So we don't have anything here that is less than 100, all more than 100. So what you will get is calculation. This kind of problem happen when it returns, uh, it returns the error because there are no value that is less than 100 in our data. So to solve this kind of problem, so you need to change uh, your criteria or you can add the uh, if uh, empty argument at the end of our syntax. So this is only available for version uh, 365, right? So I have completed all the 10 errors in Excel, okay? I hope that you get uh, something, okay? You get some information, new information that you can apply in your daily um, activities or your daily calculation, right? And um, since it's already 1 p.m., so I would like to uh, remind again, okay, this is not the last session, but not the last session for today. It's just a last session for the first slot. So we, we, we're going to have a 30 minutes break and then we will come back uh, later at 1.30 p.m. Okay, with another uh, eight interesting topic that will be presented by uh, other fellows. All right? So please come back and join us until at the end of the session by today. So um, that's all for me. So I pass back the floor to uh, our Hi, CV. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, all right. I'm thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, Mimi. All right. Wow. What a closing for the first slot. Okay. Finding all those errors, understanding all those errors, and being able to uh, meddle or settle all the problems that you have been facing uh, with Excel all this while. Let me see. Uh, let me remove the spotlight. All right, cool. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will go for a short break uh, for 30 minutes. And I hope to see you all again at uh, around 1.30 with the uh, lovable, most experienced trainer, Dr. Gobi. Yes. Uh, so please don't be late and grab a quick lunch, right? Have a short break <laughs> because there'll be more and more exciting things to be shared in excel with the rest of the trainer so um, i'm going to end this live now and uh please uh, look for the uh link again if not if you have not uh, liked the seafood time uh, facebook page please do so so that you will receive a notification for the second slot if not, just come to Seafood Time, look for the second slot, five minutes before the slot to begin. So, uh, all right. So have a great lunch, everybody. And I'll see you back. We see you back at 2. Oh, sorry, 1.30 p.m. Bye. Ah, bye, Mimi. Bye, Mimi. Bye. <laughs> I'm reading bye. something. Okay, bye, bye everyone. Okay, bye everybody.